Hi guys welcome back to another exciting video so seat back relax and let's get started. It hurt the large black collar that he had clamped down over your scent glands, you had no say in the matter. He had done so before you even had the chance to object you weren't sure if it was so no one saw that you had no mating bite or because of his need to control you. It could go either way you rubbed at it in an attempt to alleviate some of the pressure. But you had no such luck you had to deal with it, this was his only stipulation in allowing you to get a job again. No alphas better come near you again. You're lucky I am even giving a whore like you a second chance. That was a joke considering he had still refused to mate with you even though you had begged him for years to make the bond official why would I bond with such a slut you spread your legs for anyone, don't you? When he was the one who was spreading his legs but you feigned ignorance it was better that way at least you were able to leave again after being cooped up for almost a year him not bonding with you was a blessing in disguise because at least you would still be able to leave. Someday if you had somewhere to go you could always dream, right? You did your best to hide it beneath a scarf. It was embarrassing alphas didn't use these anymore they had long since faded from day to day use no matter what you did you could still see it. Your first day and all your new co-workers would think you were unable to control your scent you were 22 for god's sake but there was no arguing with him when he wanted something you did not want to risk arguing with him in the event he wouldn't allow you to keep this job in his mind. If no one could smell you they would assume you were mated and stay away what a joke. Despite all of the obstacles you could not hide how excited you were you had applied to Diener Red Inc. on a whim the two CEOs needed a secretary. Assistant the job had sounded easy enough and the pay could justify just about anything they would subject you to you thought that during the interview they would figure out you were an Omega and turn you away but you had been offered the job that day despite that. You stood staring at the entrance to that large building willing your anxieties to quiet you didn't want your new co-workers or even worse your new bosses to find you in such a state this was it. A fresh start and you were going to do everything to take advantage of it. You finally managed to take a few deep breaths that brought your BLD pressure down to normal so you walked in you were quickly greeted by a beautiful woman with bright pink hair. My name is Mina Ashido I was sent down to escort you up to the boss's floor they didn't want you getting lost this is a pretty big building she laughed. She seemed nice enough that you met her extended hand with your own and smiled my name is F and L and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to help me I am sure you're very busy with your work. She laughed and guided you towards the elevator with a gentle hand on your lower back she made it a point to take note of your collar it didn't quite match your aesthetic it just seemed out of place. And that was concerning. Mina knew a thing or two because she had seen a thing or two especially working with Katsuki and Ijiro they would be concerned as well maybe she would just let them know in advance. Once you got into the elevator she spoke again aren't you just the sweetest thing. We could use that around this place do not let those old grumps scare you off they are big ol' softies she quickly scanned an access card and pushed a button for the top floor. As the door closed you finally smelled it. Her scent, cotton candy I'm sure I have seen scarier I'll be just fine I'm not worried at all. Mina raised her eyebrows concern etched on her face but before she could say anything the door opened revealing a minimally decorated waiting area and three offices well, here we are. The boss's offices are right there at the end of the hallway and you will be here on the right sorry it's not very big but those two take up so much space she laughed. You looked over at it. The office was the size of your kitchen and living room combined you did everything to keep your jaw from hitting the floor this is more than I would ever need Mina laughed I can't wait to see how you decorate it. If you need any inspo my office is on the 24th floor my door is always open. You smiled at her gratefully you did appreciate everything she was doing she was kind and easy enough to talk to it was more than you could have hoped for and if the two hard heads in there give you a hard time come get me I'll knock some sense into M for you they sometimes forget how intimidating they can be especially since we have all known each other since high school. You couldn't help but laugh at the other woman she looked so mall what could she possibly do to protect you. I'm serious I can be very scary when I want to they are just stubborn knuckleheads and sometimes need to remember not everyone can read their minds I won't let them bully my new friend. Especially when that friend is an omega they throw their pheromones around like it's all they know how to do it's enough to make you throw up. The look of abject horror on your face said everything how did she know. HR had assured you dynamics were not important in the office and there was no need to disclose that knowledge to anyone so long as I kept on suppressants and managed my pheromones appropriately was your collar defective. Could she smell you? How were you going to tell him you messed up on day one? Whoa whoa slow your roll I can hear your overthinking from here it isn't that serious we don't discriminate here I'm an omega myself it'll be nice to have you around maybe they will start being more considerate Mina smiled plus I like how you smoke. Like lilacs lilacs and gooseberries. You took several deep breaths so it was a defective collar. It had to be there was no other explanation had he given you a defective collar on purpose. He hadn't said anything about it this morning no. Though it's not that you stammered in an attempt to gain control of this situation I'm just surprised as all most people can't smell my pheromones they are not very strong only a small lie you couldn't bring yourself to feel bad about it. Mina smiled knowingly that was not the real reason but she would play along for now it was much too early for her to pry into your business you would tell her when you were ready well they are strong to me and I am ecstatic to have you here. 
That eased your anxiety enough that you could move on? No. No, it's no problem. You quickly averted your gaze. You couldn't look her in the eyes. If you did, you might just crack. She sounded so kind and she probably would help if you asked. Well, I'm going to head and wish me luck. Nina smiled giving you a double thumbs up as she entered the elevator you'll have them eating out of the palm of your hands within the week as you watched her disappear behind the metal doors your anxiety came flooding back you slowly did your calming breaths. Breathe in for four hold it for four and breathe out for four you had to do this several times before you walked up to the door you were about to knock but the door swung open to reveal a very large man. A very large man with bright red hair that was half tied up in a bun his suit did nothing to hide his bulking frame. He was probably the biggest alpha you had ever seen if you hadn't taken your extra suppressants this morning his scent alone could send you into heat. Mina wasn't kidding when she said they throw their scents around he smelled like a rainy spring morning it was the most comforting scent you had ever encountered it made you warm and fuzzy something you don't think you had ever felt from an alpha. Good morning. I am going to be your new secretary F. N. L. And it really is a pleasure to meet you. His smile was the sun. You had never felt anything so warm it should not have caused you to have butterflies but it did you wish that smile was exclusively for you and no one else wait what were you thinking? Well, aren't you the sweetest thing? Probably way too good for me and Katsy laughed truly the pleasure is ours we have had the hardest time finding someone to fill this position you are seriously saving our asses you quickly shook his hand and prayed that you were not as red as you felt because you felt like you would combust any minute. My name is Ijiro Kirishima and the grumpy blonde pouting in the back is Katsuki Bakugo. You can call us at whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Formalities aren't super important to us. We know how nerve-wracking we can be so all we want is for you to be comfortable. Your eyes immediately darted to the back of his office. You hadn't even noticed the blonde back there. His expression was the complete opposite of Kirishima. He truly looked like he woke up on the wrong side of the bed reminiscent of an angry Pomeranian. The thought itself was enough to make you giggle. What are you laughing at? He barked not even looking up from his work. You looked over to Kirishima for help. He was most definitely the nicer of the two. Dude, seriously. It's her first day. Don't scare her off. She is the most qualified person we've found in months. Plus, no one else wants to work for you. If that wasn't a giant red flag, you didn't know what was no wonder they were offering such a high salary. TCH, whatever. Why do we need a secretary anyway? You couldn't help but feel dejected. It was obvious that you were not wanted here. It was a feeling so familiar to you that you weren't surprised, but you hadn't expected it on your first day. Dude seriously unmanly. Not manly at all you upset her Kirishima turned his attention to you ignore him he didn't get his coffee this morning since he overslept. I didn't mean to laugh I am sorry you bowed your head slightly hoping to convey your feelings you couldn't have them fire you on the first day how pathetic is that? No, no seriously stop it's fine cats come on say something he said gesturing to you. TCHHH seriously he rolled his eyes and started to cross the room he did his best to approach you slowly since you looked like a frightened kitten as he got closer smell invaded his nose it was nothing he had ever smelled before he usually hit omega pheromones the only smell he could tolerate was Kiri's but this one was out of this world he schooled his expression the best he could sometimes being a prime was more of a hindrance than anything. It's fine her mumbled voice far softer than before it's like IG said I just need some caffeine. The change in tone surprised you any trace of annoyance was completely gone you looked up at him surprised to see how red his cheeks were I could go out and grab coffee for you both if you would like I forgot myself so if you tell me your orders I would be happy to get some. That causes Bakugo to smile if Karishma's was the sun Bakugo's was the moon bright in every aspect but with a hint of mystery you would do anything to see that smile again he reached into his pocket to pull out his wallet and handed you a gold card. Get me a medium drip with cream and he will have the sweetest thing on the menu and make sure to get yourself something if you're running our errands I will not have you pay. Your eyes widened with surprise yes sir, of course. I saw a small coffee shop down the block when I was walking in this morning you took his card and put it in your wallet I'll be back as soon as I can sirs you flashed a quick smile and disappeared out the door. Dude what was that about talk about making yourself look crazy with a capital K Beck Hugo rolled his eyes before leaning against the closest bookshelf did you not smell her shitty hair? She smelled delicious I have never smelled pheromones so sweet. Kiri quirked his eyebrow in confusion yeah I mean a little but she was wearing one of those scent collars so I only smelled her faintly. Bakugo shook his head stupid alpha it was lilac lilac and gooseberries and it was beautiful. Kirishima rolled his eyes before approaching the blonde he placed his leg between his and brushed ever so gently against his length he was surprised to find him already hard that alone was enough to sour his scent better than mine he pouted. Bakugo grabbed his chin and forced him to look up at him not better just different she could be the omega we have been looking for that caused the other alpha to pause they had talked about finding an omega for the both of them they loved each other. Sure but there was only so much two alphas could do for each other they had only just started looking and it was very casual. How cliche two bosses fawning over their secretary Bakugo smiled and wrapped his arms around his waist or the one that's always going on about fate or whatever maybe that's what this is. Kiri gently laid his head against his mate's chest she's probably taken you saw that collar as clear as I did. Bakugo kissed his head gently if she was mated then why could I smell her? 
Kiri could not deny the logic it was sound they had both smelled her even if faintly that could only mean she was unbonded. They both heard her approach before she opened the door she walked in with the most genuine smile on her face. She even brought a box of pastries I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. We would wait all day if it meant that smile was on your face your face heated up instantly and you knew you were blushing um um well I um um you stammered nervously unable to get any words out stupid alphas I hope you like sweets I got some and hopes you would have a better day. Kiri happily took his cup which had more whipped cream than coffee it is much appreciated why don't you go get settled in your new office for today we will call for you later. He could have said just about anything and you would have complied his words made your brain feel fuzzy and made it hard to think straight yes sirs. Of course if you need anything please let me know you stammered while backing out of the office. As you closed the door you just missed the smile they shared that seemed to say everything and nothing at the same time you collapsed against the door sliding to the floor. Damn it, I am so if our kid. It was safe to say you loved everything about your job it had only been a couple of weeks and you fell into a comfortable routine on your way and you would always grab coffee and pastries for you and your two bosses you would meet them in their office to have a makeshift breakfast and discuss their schedules for the day then you would accompany them to most of their meeting and you met most some. They flat out told you they didn't want you there at first, you were offended but the only meetings that they kept you from were the ones late in the day so you finally reasoned that they were just being considerate. Plus, they always showered you with praise, so that did not leave much room for complaints. You had made friends with most if not all of your co-workers, by far the ones you were closest to were Mina and Denki two of the only other Omegas in the building Denki you had met a week into your employment. You were running mail to a couple of other departments when you walked in on him trying to fix the coffee machine only for a few seconds later. You watched him grab the wrong wire electrocuting himself you felt awful but according to him this happened frequently he went on about being danger prone all you could do was laugh and since then you had become fast friends. Work had become an invaluable escape a place where you were completely safe you would do anything to maintain this perfect bubble you had created for yourself but not everything could last forever no matter how hard you wanted it to. Shindo had been in high spirits the last few days so asking him if you could go out with a few friends should not have ended up in a fight but it did. And you regretted even thinking that you would be able to go the events from last night played on repeat in your head. Why should I let you go out with your so-called friends? They probably don't even like you. He shouted as everything that was on the kitchen island was sent crashing to the floor you want me to let you go out so other alphas can hang all over you. So, you can go spread your legs for anyone with a knot. Am I not enough? He screamed the last word and grabbed you by your throat so he could pin you to the wall your airflow was completely restricted so even if you wanted to explain you wouldn't be able to if he had waited. He would have heard it was an Omega exclusive club, but he hadn't given you the chance leaving Shindo was the farthest thing from your mind, even if you wanted to there was nowhere for you to go. I'll never let you go you see this he screamed as he yanked on your collar he had pulled you mere centimeters from his face this shows exactly where you belong and do not for one second think that because I let you have that little job anything different I let you get that job I could just as easily make you quit. He tossed you to the side sending you crashing through one of your glass side tables completely shattering the table and any desire you had to fight back you could feel BLD trickling down your face. It was bad this time you should be grateful that I even allow you so much freedom. Not standing here begging for more. I could easily keep you in this house. But because I love you, I let you out, and this is how you repay my kindness. You didn't dare meet his gaze the pheromones he was emitting were enough to cripple your senses tonight. You will stay here my rut is coming up and I want to warm up before that it took everything in you not to burst into tears his rut was always the worst week of your life. A week filled with pain, torture, and complete solitude you dropped every single time he wasn't gentle on a normal day but in his rut, he was downright brutal. Yes, Alpha I need to shower first I can meet you in the bedroom after Shindo smirked happy to see you had completely broken that's my good girl you hated that this was the only time you got any praise from him. And you hated that even in this situation it made you feel warm inside I expect you ready and in position in 25 minutes. You nodded quickly and ran off to the bedroom when he made a demand. You had to do everything to meet it it was going to be a long night. Why, and I'm sorry guys, I can't come out tonight. Why, and rain check. Boo, you whore am. Why? You seemed so excited earlier, D. Why? And it's nothing honestly. Why? And not feeling well is all that spicy. Ramen didn't agree with me. XOXOXOM. Feel better. Do you need me to? To bring you anything? You breathed a sigh of relief and quickly powered off your phone you had to get ready for Shindo if you kept him waiting things would only be worse. Walking to work sucked. Everything hurt with every step you took, you were reminded of what had happened last night. Reminded of what he did to you it took almost 20 minutes to cover just the bruises on your face you almost couldn't cover them but by some miracle, you managed the bruises on your neck were a different story altogether. Large handprints that were glaringly obvious no matter what you did this would be the only day you were grateful for the collar you were forced to wear luckily it hid them all from sight if you hadn't been able to make yourself look normal. He would not have let you go. You didn't want to miss out on the 8 hours of happiness you were afforded. 
As you walked into the building you smiled at Yuno. The receptionist she was always so sweet you had no idea how she remembered everyone's names. But that was probably what made her good at her job after some idle chatter. You headed for the elevator so you could get to work as the doors closed you took several deep breaths. The closer you got to your floor the more you could relax you allowed your mind to drift a little just so that when the doors opened you wouldn't look as bad as you felt. When they opened you went to rush out only to crash into what felt like a giant boulder Why? And you really should pay more attention you could get hurt than what would me and cats do. You looked up at him and laughed he was always teasing you because you were as they deemed a klutz no coffee this morning. You had to give him credit he did his best to hide his pout. But it was very clearly there I guess I did let me put my stuff down and I'll run and grab some oh oh oh. Will you get me that same one you did the other day? The one with those caramel crunchies in it. You laughed he really was an adult child you finally could say Bakugo was right sure. Does Bakugo want his normal? Hiroshima's demeanor changed ever so slightly if you hadn't been working so closely with them you would not have noticed he won't be until after lunch he had to take care of something in Shibuya. You quickly thumbed through your planner there was no way you forgot a meeting I don't have anything on his calendar Shibuya. He never goes there what do we have in Shibuya? Hiroshima quickly quieted your rambling which was slowly descending into panic. It was last minute don't worry your pretty head about it okay he flashed you one of his 1000 watt smiles before gently placing a hand on your shoulder instinctually you flinched he had done that dozens of times in the last few weeks and uh, once had you been afraid but today. You were afraid oh um I'm sorry I'm in a little pain I had a pretty bad fall last night. Liar. You hated lying but it was the only option you had all go get those coffees before he had a moment to realize what had even happened you were out the door your story didn't make any sense. You fell so that's why you flinched he had seen that very same reaction the absolute fear in your eyes made it all too clear what was going on now what was he going to do about it. First, he had to talk to his mate. K babes I think we have a problem. I hope not I really can't handle another problem. B. K it's about why and what about them. B. Did you do something. B. K first off totally unmanly. K I am offended you would even think that. K all I did was try to touch her. K and no, in a completely normal way. Calm down shitty hair I didn't think B. That you did anything bad. So, what happened? B. K she flinched. K and looked really scared. Was this time any different than before? B. K no, it was just gonna be a casual. Shoulder grab nothing wild. We can have soy sauce and Pikachu B. Look into it for us. K isn't that going a bit far? K shouldn't we just talk to her? I mean we have to protect her. B. And ourselves of course B. K that's why we should talk to her. What did she say today? B. K that she fell. You answered your question B. Those two are the best and Pikachu likes her. B. They were supposed to go out last night with Mina. But he said she got sick. B. K she didn't look sick should I send her home? K still seems like we're prying. You were the worried one B. Do you want to ignore it? B. K no you should have seen her. She looked so scared. There's her answer B. I'll try to hurry up B. K the Todorokis aren't giving you. A hard time, are they? K I should have gone with you. K did you at least take Izuku with you? Relax, I'm fine and yes, I brought B. Deku with me. Shoto is also here so it's fine B. K fine fine just hurry up. All you do miss me B. I'll wrap up quickly like in an hour B. Talk to Pikachu B. K I will I will he is due in about an hour. K be safe. I always am B. I love you B. K I love you too. Hiroshima frowned at his phone. He didn't want to have to resort to such extremes. But his mate was right they had to protect themselves on top of protecting you if something were to happen it could throw a monkey wrench in their whole operation there was more than just their livelihood at stake if that happened Denki and Siro were amazing. But they tended to not know where to stop but seeing the look of terror in your eyes was too much nothing should ever cause the light to leave your eyes. Luckily you were back pretty quickly so he wasn't able to spiral for very long that looks absolutely tooth rotting I'm in love you laughed happily and handed over his cup along with the accompanying pastries. If you're not careful you're going to get diabetes he rolled his eyes and sipped on his coffee cat says the same thing I can't have you both ganging up on me so. What if I like coffee with my sugar? It was your turn to roll your eyes he was the second most stubborn alpha you knew only to be topped by his mate who was currently at a super secret meeting in Shibuya you were not letting this one go how could you manage a schedule if they were going to add stuff to it they should at least tell you stupid alphas. Kirishima yawned and it wasn't even 9 a.m. will you have a busy day ahead of you so you should go relax while well, you can we have meetings all day starting at 10 he scoffed at you and walked off we hired a slave driver instead of a secretary. You walked off after him stop being a child Kiri these are important meetings and since Bakugo isn't here you will have to do them on your own he waved his hand dismissively he understood your concerns. But he had other things on his mind like calling for Denki and Siro. When Denki and Siro get in can you send them to my office? You looked at him confused is something wrong? You never call for them. All he did was smile at you nothing at all I just really need their help with something your brows scrunched together it still seemed a bit fishy but you were not in any place to question him yes sir I will send for them immediately. Kiri smiled at you. 
You were always so eager to please and it made his alpha sing good girl now go relax like you said we have a meeting starting soon just as he disappeared behind his door you ran for your office you couldn't bear anyone seeing you. blush no one could find out you had a crush on your bosses who were very much mated to each other so you had less than a 1% chance of them taking you seriously you were so screwed. Denki groaned as he and Cyril walked into their boss's office while flashing the several texts that he had gotten from you in his face do you have any idea how early it is dude? You never need us this early. We barely even made it in the door before they messaged us. Have you stopped by to see them today? Kirishima's abrupt tone threw them both off he had never been this cold before they both looked at each other confused I mean I saw them in their office working when we walked in here that's nothing new but I didn't have time to check on them someone needed me urgently. Kirishima leaned back in his chair and sighed he didn't even know where to start nothing about this felt great but Katz was right they had to step in the nagging feeling that was in the back of his head would not go away he was pretty sure it was him. Alpha screaming at him to protect his Omega he took a deep breath and told them everything that happened that morning hoping they would share his concern and come to the same conclusion he did but part of him hoped he was just being paranoid. Whoa whoa, pause rewind she fell. That is not what she told Mina and I she said she was sick and couldn't go out with us. Denki was a little slower to catch on but Kirishima had faith luckily the look on Siro's face told him he understood the gravity of the situation. Has she told you if she has a mate? Or even a partner? That caused Denki to think. He hadn't recalled you ever mentioning anything about your personal life no matter how much they pride you were pretty closed off in that regard she never mentioned anything directly but you know she's got that wild collar she wears she never talked about her life outside of work now that you mention it. If that wasn't a red flag Kirishima didn't know what was his alpha was howling for answers it took every ounce of willpower to keep him from storming into your office and demanding you tell him everything why don't you go talk to them. You may understand a little better. Ciro looked at Denki with concern the electric blonde had gotten attached to you and he was worried about what he would do if Ciro's suspicions were confirmed Denki was usually harmless but he could be really scary if he wanted to Katsuki and Kirishima rarely asked for their help when it came to their business their particular skills lay elsewhere outside of the day-to-day -day operation. After you've finished, you'll know what to do me and cats want to know everything you can find nothing is to be deemed irrelevant she may not be ours yet, but she will be. The two men were taken aback by the intensity behind his words it was enough to scare them Kirishima was their best friend, and they were never afraid of him except for this moment it was no secret to them that Kirishima and Katsuki thought you were everything they were missing the pair had to listen to their drunken ramblings several times over the last few weeks if you were hiding something they would find it. I'll go talk to her now I'll catch up with you. Siro nodded before heading for the elevator just let me know what she says yeah. Kirishima took a deep breath. He had to relax this was all that he could do. And he had to allow his friends to do what they needed to he would spare no expense if it meant helping you they never let them down before and he didn't think they would start now. Thank you was the only thing he could say. Denki smiled wide and waved him off I like them too I would have done it without you even having to ask. Kiri laughed Denki hadn't changed much since high school. And he couldn't help but be grateful for that well. I won't keep you two any longer just let us know everything you find out I need answers by the end of the day. They both noted the desperation in his voice. That only encouraged them to get it done faster as they approached your office. Ciro sent Denki a sympathetic look don't get all worked up in there. Okay, just find out what you can and meet me in the office. Denki nodded and watched him disappear into the elevator he sighed and knocked on your door gently before poking his head in my meeting is over hide me. You rolled your eyes at the electric blonde klutz that stumbled into your office not like you let me answer but I don't have any meetings till 10 so you can bother me till then. Denki laughed as he made himself comfortable on the corner of your desk you nose. I'm pretty bummed you bailed on us last night I was wearing my best clubbing outfit then Mina wouldn't even go when you bailed. Your smile deflated and you could barely look up to meet his eyes I I know I'm sorry really I just didn't feel good last night I think the ramen we had for lunch didn't sit well I spent all night in bed that wasn't a complete lie. You were in bed all night, but you weren't sick. You're feeling better, though, right? Pause I honestly didn't think I would see you today. That caused you to freeze up completely you didn't think he would call you out he always took whatever excuse you gave him without question oh you know why I just don't want them to get stuck without me then some poor temp would get stuck with their attitudes all day plus. You know how useless they are if I'm not here. Your nervous laugh was doing nothing to convince him you were telling him the truth he never thought twice about what you said because you always seemed so innocent or maybe naive was a better description but all this was doing was convincing him that you were hiding something much darker all he wanted to do was help but for some reason you seemed scared to ask. Before he responded he took a few seconds to look over your exposed skin, your neck, your face, and your hands he hoped he could see something maybe you had missed something maybe you weren't as good at covering up as you thought but if you're not feeling well, you should stay home and rest no one wants you here if you don't feel good. 
The way he was looking at you had you on edge. Why was he doing this? If he kept pressing you might just crack. And you could not let that happen. You had to get him to let this go. Nothing good would come from him prying. He would just get hurt. You started rubbing your hand up and down your arm not even realizing your sleeve was rolling up. There it was Denki saw that nervousness bubble up. He knew he was getting close to something you didn't want to talk about. He hated that he had to keep pushing but it was for your own good he wouldn't be able to help you if he didn't know the problem. He noticed that your sleeve was getting caught on your elbow and what he saw churned his stomach dark blue bruises around your wrist like you were restrained to something he watched for a few more seconds and he saw little angry red cuts up as far as he could see it was a mixture of old and new. In various states of healing he found the cause so all he had to do now was dig. I'm feeling fine Kami don't worry about me okay you flashed him the brightest smile you could muster and it broke his heart if you would just tell him. Well, I will bring you lunch. To ensure you are back in tip-top health there's no way I'm going to let the CEO whisper get even sicker. You laughed a real laugh this time and it made him smile okay okay, bossy I'll meet you on the roof. Denki nodded that's where we always eat isn't it? Okay see you then now go some of us have work to do Denki headed for the door as you shoot him off your desk okay alright relax have a good day. I'll see you at lunch. Before you could even respond he was out the door crisis averted at least that was what you thought little did you know he was already texting his friends. Spy kids GC. Danks dudes you were right. Danks something is off she kept. Getting nervous and jumpy any time. I said something. Cats there was never any doubt Kiri. Was wrong what proof do you have? Cats spit it out Pikachu. Danks one that's rude. Two I. Was getting there if you hadn't. Interrupted. Kiri he's sorry now please tell me. Danks it's not super good she was getting nervous and fiddling with her sleeve. Danks so I saw these dark bruises. Around her wrists they look new. Danks and she has cuts they look. Self-inflicted. Danks I'm going to help Zero now. We will figure it out okay. Cats you are positive that's what you saw. Kiri Denki please tell me you're lying. Danks I wouldn't lie about this. Cats Kiri just keep an eye on her. I'm on my way back now. Cats you and soy sauce face better. Find something today. Kiri he means, please. Zero we know don't worry. Denki meet me in the office I. Want to show you something. Denki on my way amigo. Ciro I thought we agreed on no. Spanish. Denks come on I sound so cool. Cats can you two extras. Get to work. What do you think this is a game? Ciro we don't you will have your answers after lunch then we can decide what to do. Kiri thank you both I appreciate it. Denks I would do anything for them. Cats then get to work. Already. Denki put his phone down going back and forth with Katsuki was going to do no good especially right now with him being a prime it made him fiercely protective and you weren't even as yet he could not imagine what would happen once he started to court you instead of just in his head he pushed the thoughts to the side he needed to get to his computer and fast. Katsuki stormed up to his office if the Todoroki meeting hadn't already put him in a bad mood Kaminari's news definitely would have put him over the top restraint marks he had to be lying who was restraining you and for how long he knew from experience that those bruises didn't show up just from a little rough sec those ropes. At least what he hoped were just ropes would have had to have been very tight almost to the point of cutting off your circulation that just made his BLD boil who would dare to touch his Omega. Kiri and his faded pair. The guy better pray his men get to him before he does. He walked past your office and finally saw what everyone had said you looked defeated you were doing a pretty good job at hiding it but the bags were still visible under your eyes and your scent your scent was so anxious and scared that all he wanted to do was hide you away from the rest of the world that way he could keep you safe but he had to wait. So he knew exactly what he was dealing with he didn't want you to get hurt anymore. Against his better judgment, he poked his head he discreetly released calming pheromones in the hopes of easing your anxiety today had barely even started good morning why, and it's great to see you. Sorry, I missed breakfast I hope Kiri took my place. You smelled him before you saw him cinnamon sugar. You didn't know who scent you liked better both of your bosses smelled like heaven especially when their scents mixed it reminded you of baking in early spring oh of course he did but it was nothing with you gone there was no one to make fun. The shaped pastries I bought. Katsuki laughed I will do my best not to miss any more meetings you're coming to our 10 a.m. meeting right you nodded happily showing him the agenda you had just finished typing up it is for your stockholders Kiri had told me you wouldn't be back now that you are I'll print a second copy. Thank you we would be fucked without you you rolled your eyes only cause everyone's afraid of you too. I'll just have to try harder so you're afraid of me too we'll come get you soon and we will go to the boardroom together. Okay. You smiled at him of course please go see Kiri he's a nervous wreck for some reason. Katsuki nodded and headed for his mate's office so you're a nervous wreck. Before Kiri could even respond their phones went off. Spy Kids GC. Zero dudes we found something. Denks her partner's name is Shindo Yo. Zero and he has a prior list longer than I've ever seen. Denks assault and battery. Armed robbery. Sexual assault. DB. And numerous drug charges. Zero can't find an address yet but we're working on it. Denks I think he runs with LOV. But this is unconfirmed I will reach. Out to Keigo and Aizawa. Cats good work you too. Cats I want proof solid irrefutable. Proof got it. 
Kiri he means he wants it, please. Denks yes sir. Siro you got it, boss. It was so on whoever Shindo yo was he was a dead man. It was approaching three weeks since they had started looking for information on you but they had ended up with more questions than they had answers. And a lot of those answers didn't match up with any of their questions they were doing their best not to alert you to what they were doing but you were more perceptive than they gave you credit for luckily for them. You had taken leave for your heat this past week, so they had more freedom and freedom the more freedom they had the more answers they could dig up. It was eight days ago. Eight long days ago when they first noticed the symptoms, your already addicting scent became sweeter and impossible to ignore both Katsuki and Kirishima had to take two suppressant shots each just to be around you it had finally become too much for them and despite their instincts screaming at them, decided to send you home but only after telling. Well more like demanding that you relax for the next week. Missing you was an understatement for what they actually felt they each were counting the days till you came back luckily this morning they had both gotten a text one they had been impatiently waiting for. Why, and can't wait to see you this morning. I'll bring extra breakfast cause I'm sure. There's a lot to catch up on. Why, and also stop being rude to everyone. It's not their fault. Why, and I you should have messages from. Half the office that their bosses were. Acting like teenagers. Smiling like idiots they were they just stared at the messages on their phones they couldn't formulate an intelligent response if they had tried you were coming back to work. It was like the sun was rising after a rainstorm they couldn't wait to see you walk through their respective doors the past week without you had been miserable. Not just for them but for everyone they were losing their tempers, yelling at staff, and were completely unable to focus on anything that didn't involve helping you they had sent you multiple heat care packages, in the hopes that they would ease your suffering the sheer number of meetings that had to be rescheduled was enough to prove how useless they had become with you everyone thought they were difficult before but that was nothing compared to this week without you. Even Denki or Siro couldn't get near the pair of alphas every time they tried it was like they were choking their pheromones were out of control. It was like they were permanently leaking out of them thinking that would bring the Omega back to them it was like they were horny teenagers again with Siro's self-control they were two very territorial alphas without their Omega and they desperately needed their Omega back. You stared at yourself in the mirror probably a lot longer than you should have. You couldn't help but think that you looked just as bad as you felt the bright purple bruise adorning your right eye, the callous cuts on your arms, down your back and legs the only saving grace was most of the welts were unable to be seen with the clothes you typically wore you wished you could have taken more time off so that you could heal properly you knew Katsuki and Kirishima would have let you without a second thought. But you could not physically stay in this apartment any longer the second your heat was over you were ready to leave every minute that you spent locked inside that apartment was a minute you were getting closer to just giving up. So, you did what you had to do you covered up. And by covered up you meant everything you may have been rushing but who could have blamed you? You needed to get out and at least see the sun it was taking all your spare energy to avoid dropping men and there it had already happened twice since your heat had started and after looking at the clock you realized that you didn't have time for that right now two men were expecting you in an hour and you didn't want to disappoint them as well. You had briefly looked at your phone on your way to work, and from the text messages your friends sent you the pair of alphas you worked for had been causing absolute mayhem in your absence it has become abundantly clear to you that they were lost without you. You refused to address the warm fuzzy feeling that those thoughts gave you so. After sending them a quick message you made sure to stop and get their favorites and buy favorites, that meant favorite everything, coffees, pastries even boxed lunches for the convenience store down the block you knew you were in for a rough first day back they were giant toddlers who had power. That much has been proven but you wouldn't trade them for anything. During your walk to work your mind kept drifting back to your heat. You had so desperately wanted a nest with their sense the fact that you had wanted to nest at all was a surprise. You had gotten used to not nesting at all you had tried building nests for Shindo in the beginning. But he never liked them they were either too small or not comfortable enough. So you just stopped trying you wanted to save yourself from disappointment what kind of Omega couldn't even build her alpha a suitable nest. What a useless Omega you had turned out to be you craved their sense every single day you were locked in your room there was nothing that could soothe that particular ache in your chest. It wasn't just their sense though. You found yourself wanting to show them the tiny nest that you convinced yourself to make in your closet. The closet was far from Shindo's judgmental gaze their comfort and the praise they so often showered you with you had no idea why. But your Omega was craving everything that you couldn't have they had each other you really needed to get over this and fast. But they put your mind at ease and made you feel so safe everything just clicked when you were with them why couldn't it be like that with Shindo? Walking into the building was an experience, to say the least. You were immediately assaulted by a mixture of their angry and anxious scents burnt caramel and moldy wood were not a combination you enjoyed smelling first thing in the morning or ever if you were being honest you could see what everyone was talking about now even you know who was a beta seemed to be affected by it all you offered her a genuine smile before getting into the elevator they were never going to let you take off again and if you were being honest, you didn't mind that at all. As the elevator dinged for your floor you stepped out and immediately could not breathe. 
They must have turned off the filtration system. The air was so thick with their scent that you would have thought they didn't leave this floor all week usually. This would not have affected you. But you were already so close to a drop that this just tipped you over the edge. You made it exactly four steps off the elevator before falling to the ground. Shit, this is not good was the only thing you were thinking before your mind went blank. Hiroshima was looking at his watch with a concerned look on his face. You were late. You were never late. In the months they had employed you, there was only a handful of times you had been late. And even then, it was by 5 minutes max it was approaching 20 minutes now and he couldn't stop himself from pacing all he needed was to see you to confirm you were okay he was about to walk into Katsuki's office when he barged in with you in his arms and looked very much not okay. What the fuck? He growled as he cleared off his couch for you. Katsuki was bordering on feral as he attempted to lay you down nothing he did seemed to stop your body from trembling in his arms just as he was about to pull away. He heard you whine almost as if you didn't want him to let go why and why and are you okay? Talk to me please. There was only so much he could take before he pulled you into his lap that seemed to soothe you. Your face nestled into his neck just above his scent gland. IG take this fucking patch off me now. Hiroshima nodded. As he carefully removed the patch from his mate's neck and watched your body immediately stop trembling. And your scent sweetened he would have thought you were sleeping if you hadn't been found on the floor. I'm going to get Mina maybe she can help us understand and I'll get to Ada come and look her over you don't move. Okay. Just stay here with her and if anything changes call me. Before he could answer him, he was storming out he sighed as he looked down at you curled up in his lap you looked so small. But the more he looked at you the more confused he got your color was off. It could just be you coming out of your heat. But he had a bad feeling it looked like well makeup he gently rubbed the pad of his thumb on your cheek. And your makeup easily wiped off before he could get too upset Mina walked in. Do you have makeup wipes? Mina looked at him confused before digging through her bag I mean yeah but is that our biggest concern right now? Before she even finished speaking, he took the pack from her and gently wiped away the mask you had so carefully put on. I fucking knew it he growled as he took in the cuts and bruises on your face someone is hurting her. Her heat is the time when she should feel the safest not get the crap kicked out of her. Mina was taken aback by the amount of anger in his voice. She didn't blame him but still. This was not the time Katsya gotta calm down she's dropping and dropping fast from what it looks like any fluctuation in your pheromones will send her spiraling you need to be her rock right now or we will lose her so. You gotta calm down till Ida gets here. Katsuki did his best to suppress his growl can you grab Kiri's jacket from the chair over there. Mina nodded and quickly draped it over you she quickly noticed that your eyes were moving behind your eyelids that was a good sign at least you hadn't drifted too far from them. Getting you back wouldn't be too hard. Minutes had felt like hours. Mina couldn't stop pacing back and forth waiting Katsuki's leg had started bouncing. He just had to get the anxious energy out somehow how long did it take to pull Ida from his office. All he did was superficial checkups well maybe the occasional stab or bullet wound but it was a Monday morning no one got stabbed on a Monday he was about to carry you downstairs himself when they both walked and followed by the wonder duo themselves, Siro and Denki and was that Izuku behind them. When did he get back? Ada made the mistake of approaching you a bit too quickly. Before he could think better of it, he reached out to examine you. But Katsuki had other plans, he growled. And he growled loudly with fangs out and all Kirishima had to step in before he bit Ada cats. Ada has to look them over he has to make sure they are okay. Katsuki motioned for him to look down at your face. Kirishima had seen it the moment he walked back in but if he lost it there would be no reeling in his mate hun this is why it is here he won't hurt her you know that. And you can stay here the whole time he attempted to reason Katsuki conceded and leaned back against the couch okay Ida he's fine now. As Ida started examining you Kirishima had other plans for Denki Siro and Deku we really need answers and need them soon this is a direct result of our inability to find answers where is he? Who is he? And why does he have our Omega? Denki sighed he had hoped to reveal this under less tumultuous circumstances, but here they were he is 100% a leader in the LOV most likely pretty low on the totem pole it's confusing as to why we're having a hard time gathering and kind of intel it shouldn't be guarded all that closely especially if he's not that important Aizawa and Hawks did manage to find out a couple of interesting things he owns a flat in Fukuoka which is where the LOV is based which is convenient, where she has openly admitted to living they have been together since they were both 16 so about 7 years this spring they are not made it and are and always have been each other's only partners today he is slated to be at a meeting with the Todoroki clan he has been spearheading the peace talks between both groups Hawks got that straight from Taoya so you know it's legit. Siro cut him off the meeting is supposed to go down around 6 in Shibuya at that abandoned warehouse they like to use that's just off the dock. Thank god that flashy pompous overgrown bird is fucking a Todoroki or they may not have gotten this information fan fucking tastic that leaves no time to plan anything Deku. Think you can get there and get a tracker on Shindo. They will not be returning to whatever flat he owns I also need someone to go to there and clear out their stuff you will then bring it to ours you can have whoever you need to get this done quickly is that clear. All three men acknowledged him and ran out of the room they had way too many things to figure out talk about a logistical nightmare. But it was for you pinky. You go too. 
You'll know what's theirs and what's not she only nodded quickly following them out. Ada what's wrong? Hiroshima asked as the look of concern on his face grew. I'll have to do some BLD tests, but this is a drop I will want to do a more in-depth exam when they wake up because I am certain that the marks you see right now are not all of them in domestic violence cases what you can't see is usually worse than what you do see you said, we're just on heat leave, correct? Kirishima nodded moving so he was standing next to you both yet yeah, they were out for a little over a week. Ada sighed as he took in the aggressive looks both alphas had on their faces this was not looking good for anyone he would have to lock both of them out of the room if this continued he sent Kirishima a pleading look I don't know when they will come out of this but I suggest taking her somewhere safe and I will meet you there to get an IV started I can do the BLD work now so I will be able to give you the results later. Kirishima nodded Ida was the best doctor they had. Whatever he said they would do whatever he needed they would get for him you deserved nothing but the best and that was exactly what you were going to get. We will be taking her home with us so just meet us over there after you're done he turned towards his mate inside let him do what he has to. Or I will muzzle you myself until he's done. Katsuki looked away he knew IG was right. But his alpha was growling how could he not have protected his omega? How had he let this happen? He could have prevented all of this from ever happening but it did happen. It happened because they hadn't wanted to scare you away from them. It's not your fault cats we were doing all we could to find out what was wrong okay. All we can do now is help and the first step would be getting that collar off her and letting Ada do what we pay him to do Katsuki nodded and carefully unlocked the collar from your neck. Ada frowned as more bruises were revealed. Sadly they were all in the shapes of handprints and bite marks lucky for you and his bosses there wasn't a mating bite to be seen he carefully laid out everything he was going to need four tubes should be enough anymore and he risked the wrath. The alpha's in the room okay, you ready Katsuki? Katsuki nodded and looked away he didn't want Kirishima to muzzle him for the rest of the day he knew he wasn't bluffing either he had done it to him several times. During their relationship that would just be uncomfortable and would probably scare you when you woke up just do it. Ada nodded as he pulled out his needle to begin drawing your BLD he was about halfway done when the growling kicked back up again Bakugo come on the more you do this the longer it'll take. Katsuki didn't care you had started to wince it was very clear to him that he was causing you undue pain before he could open his mouth to snap back a muzzle was locked. Over his mouth cats I told you. I want to get angry too but if one of us doesn't keep a level head then what would happen? Katsuki grumbled from beneath the muzzle. Where his mate had found one or where he had one hidden, he would never know but now he was angry and partially restrained. How would he protect you like this? He huffed in annoyance once he realized it was not coming off oh what a good boy Katsuki leveled his glare at Kirishima he was about to become the new target of his aggression. Luckily the muzzle was enough to distract Katsuki long enough for Ada to finish what he had to do I will rush these labs and meet you at the apartment the one over in Musutafu right. Both alphas nodded as he walked out after he was completely out of sight take this fucking thing off me was what Katsuki thought he said but what Kirishima heard was more akin to a muffled noise luckily. He was the best at understanding his mate. Tusk 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 you should not be yelling he could not help the teasing tone that slipped into his voice if you behave. I will take it off behaving consists of not biting the doctor's hands off. Katsuki glared at him see that's not doing anything to convince me you can try again when we get home because I sure don't want to get bit either. As Kirishima went to take you from his arms Katsuki held on tighter no way was. Letting you out of his arms he was more than capable of carrying you to their car fine. Fine grumpy but try not to scare all of our employees Katsuki just growled at him and went to their elevator he wouldn't let anyone see you. Luckily the drive wasn't a long one they were parked and walking through their front door within 15 minutes of leaving their office Katsuki looked over his shoulder to tell Kirishima something but sighed I will get some of those nesting supplies we bought go make her comfy in our den. Okay. Katsuki huffed so what if that's what he was going to say he should have been at least able to say it himself he lowered you to the bed and gently took your shoes and jacket off he wanted to put you in a pair of his sweatpants but he didn't want you to feel some type of way when you woke up. Just put the pants on her and slide the skirt over them Kirishima suggested before piling the soft blankets on the corner of the bed. Katsuki just rolled his eyes and didn't respond shitty hair. Once Katsuki was done. They watched you snuggle into their pillows appearing to be happy that you were surrounded by their scents Katsuki gently pulled the blanket up to your shoulder so you could get some rest he pointed to the lock on the muzzle expectantly wanting it taken off. Are you going to behave while Ida is here later? Katsuki wished he could bite Kirishima right about now forget about what glasses needed to do his mate was the one getting on his last nerve Kirishima sensing the hostility radiating off of him rolled his eyes primes were such a pain this is not going to help her so either you chill the fuck out or you can go back to work this is getting to be a bit extra if you ask me. Katsuki frowned behind the muzzle shitty hair had a point he nodded his concession fine whatever I'll behave I won't bite the shitty doctor or you either okay shitty hair that enough for you. Kirishima smiled and unlocked it quickly was that so hard? Kastuki rolled his eyes yes, yes it was. As the two of them argued they failed to notice you stirring in their bed most likely sensing their annoyed sense. 
You groaned and rubbed your eyes out of habit completely forgetting about your bruised eye. OFRK you struggled to sit up. Where were you? Your bed wasn't this soft. The last thing you remembered was getting to work shit I collapsed at work before you could jump out of bed you felt a large hand settle onto your shoulder. No, no princess you need to lie down our doctor is on his way you dropped this morning. After he checks you out later, we can talk, okay. That was Kirishima you knew before he even opened his mouth you were in their den. The thought alone made you want to cry of all reasons to be dragged into another alpha's den this was it before you could help it. Tears were running down your face damn it he's gonna kill me this time. You didn't care who heard you if this was the last time you would see your bosses it didn't matter anyway you could not go home smelling like this especially not without your collar. Wait fuck where's my collar you panicked looking around the room finally able to take in your surroundings it was a very modern styled bedroom decorated in warmer earth tones not at all what you would have pictured. They sat on either side of the bed and released calming pheromones. If you didn't stop you would be back in the same situation you were just a little bit ago we took it off and no one is gonna kill you got it. No one will ever hurt you again Katsuki this time you couldn't do this they couldn't promise you that I need it I can't go back without it. Good thing you ain't going back. Princess you're ours now and there isn't a person alive who can take you away from us as Kirishima finished his sentence the damn broke sobs racked through your chest and they wouldn't stop. Were you safe? Shindo knew some pretty seedy people they would probably just get hurt you didn't want them to get caught up in the mess that was your life why did you think you could have anything nice? If that was the case, why couldn't you move? Why were their arms the only place you wanted to be the only place that felt safe? After a few minutes, you ended up conceding you could stay like this for a little bit Shindo was going to be home late anyway maybe this was okay. They stayed by your side for almost four hours all they could do was watch as you cried yourself to sleep it shattered them to the core to see you in such a state especially since there was nothing they could do to help you deserved nothing less than the world why you were settling for less they did not understand and why you weren't getting that was completely beyond them the only reason they were able to leave your side was that they heard people walking into their apartment it had to be the idiot squad no one they knew was that loud Katsuki gently wrapped his blanket around you and kissed your temple before begrudgingly walking out of the room with his mate in tow. Why are you extras so goddamn loud? You are going to wake them up. He growled as he entered the kitchen. Kiri rubbed his shoulder soothingly in an attempt to calm his partner's nerves. What he means to say is please keep your voices down. We finally got why. End to sleep. I see Kiri finally let you off your leash. Denki laughed as he hopped onto the countertop so he could sit comfortably. Katsuki growled and tried to lunge at him from his spot across the kitchen. Lucky for Denki. Hiroshima was faster and quickly wrapped his arms around Katsuki's middle all while peppering small kisses to his shoulder. Shinso less than gently placed a hand over his mate's mouth before he could say anything. To further irritate their boss's lightning bug, you should know better than to tease him right now it is not exactly the best time right now don't you agree? Denki leaned back into his alpha pouting from behind his hand mmmmpppffmmhh. Shinso smiled at him and kissed his forehead I will choose to believe that is you apologizing for being careless with your words. Denki huffed and nodded excuse him he zapped himself one too many times today. Kirishima did not even give Katsuki a chance to respond it's fine he is just on edge especially with everything going on usually. Some silly taunting wouldn't even garner a reaction but thanks for the apology. Katsuki huffed as they talked like he wasn't even there where did they get off. He wasn't just someone who could be sidelined but there are more important things to talk about than Pikachu's loudmouth I'm assuming since you are all here there must be some kind of update also. I thought I had asked you to bring her things it's not like I asked that much of you. Shinso yawned and rolled his eyes Mina and Jiru are bringing up their things now it was less than we had anticipated only about three suitcases worth. That was a cause for concern for the pair of alphas are you sure you grabbed everything? As if on cue Mina and Jiru walked in how dare you doubt us I think I know them well enough to what stuff was theirs but this was all I could find I will talk to them later to make sure don't worry your spiky little head. What about the tracker? Deku stepped forward handing his best friend a small handheld device it wasn't easy he sure is a slippery fuck but I managed to get one on his car my only concern will be what we are going to do about him my informants say he is almost always seen. Along with Jin Bubegawara Aka twice and Shuichi Aguchi Aka spinner. Katsuki Huff those two are of no concern to us what are they going to do to us all we have to do is separate them. Deku sighed he understood why Kakin was on edge. But he would not allow him to act rashly this was the LOV after all separately neither one of them is a problem. But all three together is cause for concern and simply splitting them up will be no easy task. What does he do for the LOV anyway? It was Ciro's time to chime and he is one of the lower ranking generals. He by himself does not hold a lot of power. They mostly use him for small missions and minor intel gathering. He only has the position he does because of why, and apparently. I don't understand what does why, and have to do with this. Hiroshima looked between all their friends. And it was clear they were keeping something from them what could possibly be so bad that they were afraid to tell them. Just as Siro was about to clarify further you walked into the kitchen wrapped in Katsuki's blanket they hadn't thought it was possible. 
but you looked even worse now than you had earlier your eyes were still red and swollen from crying most of your makeup was wiped away showing off the full extent of the bruising you didn't have to go to all this trouble it seems like they wasted a lot of time looking for information you could have just asked me about it doesn't seem like I can keep it from you any longer anyway. Your voice caused them to turn around they rushed to your side so they could help you to sit down you should still be sleeping we can send it and there to finish checking you out to make sure you're okay. You brushed them off if they were going to talk about you. They would do it in front of you don't you want to know why Shindo is so important? That's what Siro was getting to wasn't it? The pair of alphas felt guilty they hadn't wanted to do this behind your back. But it was the only way they knew to help and it's not like you had been forthcoming to begin with how would they know? We just wanted to help you have no idea how scared we were. You sighed you knew they were telling the truth, but this was way over their heads well. What Siro was probably going to say was my dad is the current Oyabun of the LOV that's why they humor Shindo and why I'm not allowed to leave his being with me solidifies his position he loses me he gets kicked out. Katsuki looked at Siro in the hopes that you were lying because if this was the truth, they had a way bigger problem to deal with but he only watched as Siro averted his eyes in a poor attempt to avoid confirming your story after he got over the shock of it all hun there's not one person that we are afraid of not even your dad. We didn't get to where we are by backing down. It was her turn to be confused why weren't they taking this more seriously. Do you both not understand what I just said? Do you understand the gravity of the situation you've involved yourself and in? I have to go home I can't stay here he will find me. Kirishima smiled we understand more than you know how do you think we found all this out we have had our people infiltrating the LOV for months now we started this long before we hired you so don't panic the LOV has been a pain in. Our asses for a while now Katsuki squeezed your shoulder gently you don't have to go back anywhere you don't want to and no one will find you you're completely safe here. Wait 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 I am going to need you to pause for a minute are you guys in the Yakuza too? That would be the only reason you are not as afraid as I am. Everyone in the room laughed as if it should have been obvious to you we are not just in the Yakuza we are the Yakuza this is our prefecture and has been for years now Katsuki inherited it from his parents shortly after we all graduated we were all lucky enough to be brought in with him. You were completely overwhelmed by what was going on around you how could you have not noticed? Who was your mom? That was all you could manage to ask. Mitsuki Bakugo also known as the White Snake of Musutafu my dad Masaru wasn't involved at all really it wasn't his thing the moniker was a name you recognized? Your dad had mentioned her numerous times he was always having a problem with her it seemed. She was the only one that had ever come close to killing him. Oi, you can close your mouth now sweetheart I know what you're thinking our parents have a lot of history don't worry we will talk about all this so much more when you are feeling better he sat on the arm of the chair and gently played with your hair a small attempt to soothe your ever-growing anxiety. But I have to go home I can't stay here forever he will come looking for me Kirishima laughed it's just like we told you he won't find you Mina and Denki are going to take you to the guest bedroom so you can make yourself at home we put nesting supplies. Soaps, shampoos anything we thought you might need if you need. You gave me nesting stuff. You asked not even allowing him to finish explaining. It was just stuff we had around the house for emergencies. If you don't like it we can take you to get the stuff that you do like Mina said she couldn't find your nesting stuff at your apartment. So we wanted to make sure you had something it wasn't that you wouldn't like it. It was in fact quite the opposite. Um, I don't I don't think I know how to make one a nest I mean I'm not any good at it. My mom died when I was born my dad never really tried to teach me. I think he hated the fact that I was an Omega anytime I would try to build one for Shindo and me. He well he didn't like them that much so I just don't nest anymore. So how do you spend your heat if you don't build a nest? Your face turned bright red from the embarrassment Shindo had a room built for me and I spend them in there. Katsuki did everything he could to suppress the growl building in his chest how dare he. Did he not know what rejecting an Omega's nest did to them? How that would affect them? All Omega's ever wanted to do was please their alphas I have no doubt you build the most comfortable nests in the world why don't you take Denki and Mina into your room and get it set up? Kiri and I will come to look at it when you're done okay. Your eyes widened at his words. They hadn't even seen your poor attempts at nesting they surely wouldn't be happy with it once they saw how bad they were you could feel tears starting to roll down your cheeks one more attempt couldn't hurt. Could it? You looked over to your friends you'll show me. Mina smiled widely and took your hands oh yeah I will show you how to make the best nests ever Ciro loves mine she said tossing a wink at him over her shoulder happy to see his cheeks tint red Denki was quick to help you up oh. Yeah don't you worry we will teach you all the tricks and I bet they gave you the best blankets and if we're lucky we can steal some of their clothes. That caused your face to turn bright crimson but before you could even register how embarrassed you were they were dragging you down the hallway. Katsuki and Kirishima turned to who was left in the room and from the look they gave them they understood what had to happen next you are to all be on high alert let Aizawa and Keigo know what's going on this will directly affect them. So they need to know a SAP and Deku I need you to reach out to Shoto and see what he is willing to do to help I know he and Taya are working on trying to overthrow their father to prevent him from allying with the LOV so it would do us a lot good to get your boyfriend caught up on what's going on. 
H he's n not my boyfriend Kakan Katsuki rolled his eyes Deku you've been with him your last three heats you think we don't know you two are fucking just talk to him. Deku sighed Kakan knew more than he gave him credit for I'll set a meeting for later this week. Katsuki grunted and watched them all walk out. The only person left was Ida and he looked like he was itching to say something all right glasses what's the deal you have been way too quiet this whole time. Ida stepped forward inside he held a small folder in his hands well I told you both I would do initial labs to get a baseline for why and in that once I got those results I would hopefully know how to proceed. Both alphas nodded taking note of how nervous their friend was just tell us Ida there isn't anything that we can't fix. His friends had way too much faith in his abilities this was one of the worst cases he had seen in his career well. Her hormones are low so low they don't even show up on my chart. They are well into the danger zone for Omegas it is very clear she is not being taken care of and that she either does not know how or is not taking care of herself on purpose. I had expected her levels to be off because of her heat but the labs don't even indicate that she could have had one Katsuki and Kirishima were very confused they didn't understand what he was saying. Ada sighed seeing the blank looks on their faces he would have to try to explain again usually. When an omega has their heat there are markers you can find in their BLD residual hormones. Imbalances. Electrolyte deficiencies. Low iron, high white BLD cell count stuff like that why? And has none of those with her levels being as low as they were a heat should not have even been possible luckily. I drew extra BLD and was able. To run a tox screen which came up positive for a drug that is commonly used to induce an omega's heat it is very popular on the black market. It is used most commonly by men who are trying to pick up omegas at the bar think similarly to a date rape drug it looks as though she had been taking it consistently for a week. Katsuki leveled his glare and calmly asked so glasses. What you're saying is that Shindo drugged her for a week so that she would go into heat. Yes, that is what I am saying I will need to put her on several medications to get her to where she needs to be but I want to do a physical exam first and for that. I will need you both it will probably be very uncomfortable for her they both agreed as they led him down the hall. Pinky, Pikachu out Ida needs to see why. And Katsuki said as he walked into the guest room. You frowned up at the two as they started to walk away you were just starting to understand what they were trying to teach you you quickly tried to grab Denki's hand you whispered I told you they would hate it Denki kneeled in front of you and smiled. They don't hate it Ida is our doctor he probably wants you to get checked out they're just worried about you they want what's best for you just like we do besides Ida is like the best there is. His words did very little to ease your anxiety what was probably worse was he was a doctor you'd not been to one in years he didn't look all that bad if you were being honest. He had a very kind face if you actually thought about it can you stay. Denki looked over at the pair of alphas not sure what to say to you. They both sighed they both can wait in the living room and can come back in when Ida is finished is that agreeable? You nodded since it seemed important. And it didn't look like much would change their minds. The nest you made is lovely Katsuki said once they had left the room super manly why? And best nest I've ever seen the compliments made you blush you were honestly prepared for them to make you take it apart. You looked up at both of them tears pooling in the corners of your eyes you like it. Is it really good enough? Because if it's not I can try again they showed me a couple of different ways to do it this was just the easiest you conveniently left out that any other way you had tried it wouldn't work. Their hearts shattered as they watched how nervous you were. An Omega should never be nervous to show off their nest it is the best nest we have ever seen we would be lucky if someone made us a nest half as good as this you. Rewarded them with the sweetest smell, your pheromones were out in full force, and it made their heads spin how could one Omega smell so good? You think you could let Ada check you out? We need to know what's going on so that we can get you the right help. You stood up slowly doing your best not to hide behind the two towering alphas. But you couldn't help it all you wanted was to curl up in your nest with your the two alphas hi, my name is F, N, L, and it's nice to meet you. Ida smiled my name is Tenya. And the pleasure is all mine I do wish we were meeting under better circumstances but that cannot be helped I want to do a short physical for today so I can take note of all your injuries. And we can start treating them is that okay? You only nodded as you stepped out from behind Kirishima. Well, do not worry there will not be any needles today I had drawn what was needed back at the office I can explain the results to you if you want or Katsuki and Kirishima can later you looked back at both of them hoping they would tell you what to do but you weren't that lucky later is fine. Perfect so can you show me what is bothering you one by one you nodded and began pointing out each ache, pain, and injury you could think to mention. The two alphas were growing more enraged as each new bruise, each new cut was revealed of course, it wasn't your fault but how could anyone do this to you? They watched as Ida carefully examined each injury with the utmost care. They only wanted to intervene once. And it was as they watched him attempt to set your wrist in a brace I think it's fractured or possibly sprained can you tell me what happened? You bit down on your bottom lip as you looked between the three men in the room hoping to find a way out of this seeing no other option. You had to tell him it's from the cuffs in my heat room he says that he doesn't want me to wander off looking for another alpha while he is gone so. When he's not there he puts them on but it's not so bad really. 
He backtracked as quickly as you could he is only worried because it has happened a few times when I was younger random alphas always showed up during my heateds to keep me safe. I think I just pulled on it too hard. Ada should get a bonus for keeping his expression level because he was appalled to hear you had been treated in such a disparaging manner well. Whatever happened I will need you to keep this on for 4-6 to six weeks till it heals, okay. Think you can do that you nodded as he released your arm good girl in a few days. My mate Yuraka will come to do the more intimate parts of the exam I don't feel it is appropriate for me to conduct that on you now your shoulders visibly relaxed at hearing that information now. You will take all of these medications as instructed also. You will rub this cream on every single cut, and I mean every single one till they heal no excuses okay. You nodded taking everything from him very good I will give instructions to Bakugo and Kirishima before I leave this way. They can help you then I will come to check on you again in two weeks it was lovely to meet you why? And Katsuki moved and walked out finally giving you a second to take in the last couple hours IGI he quickly pulled you into his arms and shushed you he rubbed his hand up and down your back happy when you started to relax no. No we can talk about whatever it is later do you want to cuddle in your nest? I'm sure Denki would come back and if you asked him I think it would best you get some rest. You nodded quickly moving to curl up in the blankets I'd really like Denki to come back Kirishima smiled and kissed the top of her head I'll send him in. Kirishima left your room Denki go be with her I don't think she can handle any more alphas today and plug in the alpha pheromone neutralizer that's on the nights and it should help clear out the room Denki nodded and quickly left to be with you. Oi, why not us? Why does he get to cuddle with her? Katsuki demanded you had wanted both of them earlier what was different now? One we have work to do and two I think she has had enough alphas for the day she needs time to reset time to relax don't cha think. Katsuki conceded quickly he was right as always but he would never say that out loud Ijiro's head was already big enough fine. I get it let's get started then our meeting with Shoto is tomorrow at 2pm and we need to work out a security detail I do not want her left alone they both went to their home office to start making the arrangements necessary. In Fukuoka, Shindo was just now walking into his apartment to find it completely ransacked furniture upturned, dishes broken. Windows open the worst part was you and all of your stuff were missing that ungrateful beach. After everything I have done for them, this is how I am repaid. I'll show that slut he quickly grabbed his phone and started shooting off text messages the first one was meant for Hawks Akakago. He was the LOV's newest recruit, and he could find anyone. At least that is what he claimed time to test that theory. She's missing. S. Whoa dude slow your roll. K. Who's missing? K. My Omega who else? S. Find her. Now. S. Oh, damn your kitten run away K. So much for having her train K. Must not have given her enough toys K. Less snark and more searching. S. Her dad will kill us both. S. Alright, I'll start looking okay K. I'll find her K. F. R. King better S. I want that beach found. S. Kago sighed and pocketed his phone they were all hoping that they had a little more time before Shindo found you missing he quickly pulled out a different phone and sent off one text. He knows they are missing K. He just asked me to find them K. Is there a plan? K. Come to the office K. We have a plan B. Well, the start of a plan E. Bring Aizawa too, please E. It had been almost a week and you had barely left your room when the boys were home that is it didn't help that they were nothing but kind. Understanding. And they gave you all the space you needed they had even made sure to send Mina and Denki to check in with you so that you weren't left completely alone every day without fail before you even realized you were hungry they would knock on your door and you would either find a small snack or a complete meal somehow. They always seemed to know exactly what you needed before you did it was more than you had any right to ask for. More than you deserved really you were sure they would let this continue for as long as you wanted needed but that wasn't fair here they were giving you the moon and all you could do in return was avoid them sure. When they left you snuck out to clean their apartment, to clean but was that enough? They had done everything for you and you couldn't even manage to say two words to either of them you had barely even given them half of the story so gods only knew what they had already uncovered these were parts of your life that you had worked so desperately to keep hidden from everyone that was in your life they had made it clear over and over again that you owed them no explanation and that you only had to tell them if you ever wanted to but knowing them they would find out eventually they were probably working on getting answers right now it would be better to hear it straight from the horse's mouth this way no wires would get crossed and you could clear up any confusion right then and there. You looked around the nest that had become your home, a mismatch of the boys' clothes that you had slowly stolen thanks to Denki's extensive lessons blankets, pillows, Denki's sweater that you begged him for, and a scarf Mina had left the other day you needed your phone maybe you could start with texting that was much easier than facing them you couldn't bear to watch as they looked at you with that look the look people gave you when they saw your cut, the look that said they pitied you, the one that showed you how much better than you they knew they were. Texting it was faceless. They were emotionless messages you could do this this was not a cop out who were you kidding it was so a cop out they hadn't even been home since last night so if you wanted to go out and talk to them you could. Hey why and when are you coming home? Why and she lives and breathes. IG not till later tonight. Cats I've been eating everything you give me. 
Of course, I'm alive, why, and I was just hoping to talk to you tonight, why, and don't force yourself to do anything. You are not ready for cats. I mean I'm happy I can't say that. I haven't been worried about you, IG. I know I know why, and you have been nothing short of perfect why, and I can't avoid you forever, it's not fair to you, I mean I'm living in your house, why, and it's your house too and no cats. How many times we gotta tell you that cats, all we want is for you to feel safe, IG. We want you to feel at home, IG. I am so not touching that right. Now not at all why and we have too many other things to talk about first why and either way I am thrilled you are talking to us Pebble IG. How do you want to do this? Cats, we could take you out to dinner. Do you want us to come home? Cats, would you maybe why and I mean if you want to that is why and consider why and spit it out. Cats, cats unmanly dude. IG, coming into my nest to talk. Why and if you want to I mean I think I would feel more comfortable there why and was not expecting that one cats. Unmanly dude. IG. You are on a roll tonight IG. If that is what you want we would. Be happy to join you in your nest IG. Who you let into your nest is your. Choice and we are honored to. Even be considered IG. You will read that last message four times before you buried your face in between your knees even in text messages. They couldn't help but say the most embarrassing things were all alphas like this or were yours just unique. There are so many other ways they could have chosen to word that those two big alpha jerks. What were you supposed to say in response to that? Why, and, well, that was most definitely not what you were supposed to say to that smooth move why, and they were not only going to think you were a moron but they would also know how flustered they made you. Oh, come on Pebble that's all you got for us. IG, you always had some snarky retort before what happened. Cats, what am I supposed to say? To that, there is nothing to say to that why, and, and no good girls use their words when they want to say something cats. You would have been better off hiding in this room until you died the two of them were going to kill you you wanted to be mad. You knew he was teasing you but you could not help that warm feeling that was building in your chest it was almost as if you could feel his breath on the back of your neck as he whispered those words into your ear good girl. Pebble, you okay? IG, you killed her. IG, I did not. Cats, you make me regret wanting to. Talk to you why and he's just teasing you. Don't shut us out. Please IG, we will be home in about 45 minutes. Is that enough time for you too? Compose yourself. Cats, shut up. Why, and that's plenty of time. Why, and you can just come into my room. Why, and perfect. Cats, see you soon. IG, you huffed angrily as you threw your phone across the room. How is it that no matter how hard you tried, they always managed to fluster you? If this is what a few text messages did, how were you going to look them in the eyes at all? You could not keep thinking about it, for you feared if you did, your face would be flushed red permanently. You could feel your anxiety start to creep up on you and that was not something you could afford to deal with right now. You frantically started to rifle through your nest as you looked for a very familiar black and orange hoodie you had stolen it from their den on one of your first days here and it was your favorite part of your nest you knew it was Katsuki's by style of it but it smelled of both alphas meaning Ijiro also stole this one quite frequently you had to calm down if you didn't there was no way you were going to make it through this night. You pulled the sweater on over your head and nestled as far into your nest as you could a nap would do you good. You would be able to collect your thoughts, slow your racing heartbeat, and hopefully gain the confidence to face them when they got home before you knew your eyes were getting heavier you pulled the softest blanket you had over your head and quickly fell asleep they would wake you up when they got home right. It was just as they promised you 45 minutes later they were both walking through the front door as they stepped out of the Jenkin they were blessed with the smell of a contented Omega while it was similar to your normal scent. This one was sweeter and more inviting getting to smell you like this made breaking that tacky collar worth it your floral scent had spread to each corner of the apartment. At least she doesn't smell so scared anymore she smells almost happy Ijiro smiled as he poured them each two knuckles of whiskey Katsuki took his glass and drank it down quickly he hated to admit it but some liquid courage would do this conversation. Some good he did not want to commit another felony today. Boy shitty hair let's go she is in her nest and I cannot wait any longer to see her. Ijiro quickly downed his glass, probably a bit too fast but who was paying attention? He ran down the hall and stood next to his mate as he knocked on the door five minutes went by with no response they knocked again and still nothing. What the fuck she asked us to come home and now she's going to ignore us. Ijiro hushed him and cracked the door you had told them it was okay to just come and he smiled fondly as he saw the small lump in the middle of your nest they are asleep must have been really anxious he pushed the rest of the door open so Katsuki could see. That's my sweatshirt I was wondering where it had wandered off to it's my favorite one I really am starting to think that Denki is a bad influence on them. Teaching them to steal from our den does he think we are eye bags or something. 
Anjiro laughed first off I stole it from you first so they're just looking for some form of comfort. You should be happy that our sense give her that I'm surprised she even wants to be around Alpha Sense at all shouldn't you be happy instead of standing there all broody. Katsuki rolled his eyes that was not the point of course he was happy that his Omega wanted his stuff he would give you whatever you needed but would it have hurt to ask? Just so he didn't waste a whole day looking for it? She said we could just climb in, right? Or do you think we should wake her? Aijiro wasted no time not even bothering to answer Kastuki as he climbed right into your nest it was perfect, warm, big, and had so many delicious scents woven into it if this was heaven was like he hoped he died tomorrow he opened his arms and watched you happily make yourself comfortable against his chest your nose slowly made its way to his scent glands as he breathed in his smell a small purr could be heard rumbling from your chest. Whoa 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 no fair I want in on this too. Katsuki frowned as he was only able to hold you from behind but his mood changed when he realized how close your scent glands were in this position he wrapped his arms around your waist and nestled his face into the crook of your neck a nap was not half bad idea they had a long day and it seemed like they were in for an even longer night. I do not remember the last time we actually napped. Katsuki laughed me either honestly but it seems like a good day to pick up a new habit. It only took a few minutes before both alphas were fast asleep before they were completely lost. They made sure to rumble their own purrs back to you hoping they were providing you with the comfort that you needed they did not have a lot of experience with Omegas, so everything was new to them and all they had to work with was their instincts. The only thing they knew for sure was that laying in your nest with you, surrounded by all three of your scents, helped them to have the best sleep they had ever had. Three hours later, you groaned as you attempted to stretch your arms above your head, but they were pinned to the bed why was there a huge weight on top of you? And why were you sleeping on a rock? Weren't you in your nest before? You opened your eyes only to see a mess of blonde and red hair when did they get home? They were supposed to have woken you you gently tried to maneuver out from their arms without waking them you were only half successful. Your purr is really cute. You turned around as you heard the familiar deep and gravelly voice of Katsuki still thick with sleep as your e. C eyes met his bright red your cheeks heated up and he knew he had you where he wanted you. I'm so sorry I really did want to talk to you both I honestly didn't mean to foul you felt a finger gently press against your lips before you could continue your rambling apology. If you keep going on like that, you'll wake up shitty hair and neither of us wants that trust me he is awful when you wake him up before he's ready. You looked at him in complete disbelief Kiri was the embodiment of the sun itself there was no way he was ever grumpy you had to think back but you don't think you ever saw him raise his voice before. If you don't trust me, you can wake him up and find out. You shook your head not wanting to ruin the image you had in your head of your red-haired alpha you both should have woken me up I really had this whole thing planned out well you kinda did but he didn't need to know that small detail. He gently brushed the hair from your face and carefully tucked it behind your ear it took everything in you not to flinch or shy away from it because the last thing you wanted to do was hurt his feelings and from the look he was giving you now, he noticed. You think we don't hear your nightmares, but we do we hear you every single night so, since you seem to be sleeping soundly we saw no reason to wake you. You heard me so, I woke the both of you up. You mumbled looking away from him I'm sorry I didn't want to do that. Katsuki cupped the side of your face and gently rubbed his thumb across your cheek we were just worried and you wouldn't come out. That's why we were so glad when you let Pikachu and Pinky in because at least you were talking to someone. You couldn't help but lean into his touch it was just so warm and surprisingly soft for someone as high up in the Yakuza as him you would have thought they would be rough and calloused but that couldn't be farther from the truth you couldn't respond. You had nothing to say that would have added any value to the moment anything your brain supplied would have ruined everything when you finally looked back up at him you couldn't discern the look in his eyes it was not one you were familiar with it. this how you looked at someone you loved. You wondered if you looked at him the same way. You quickly pushed all of those thoughts aside when you felt movement behind you Kirishima must be waking up how long did we sleep for? Three hours Katsuki laughed as he watched his mate rejoin them in the world of the living. Holy shit that was the best sleep I have ever had he sat up and draped himself over your shoulder flashing you a reassuring smile one that always put you at ease. No matter what was going on so, I guess it's my turn to talk now. Only if you want to you don't have to tell us anything before you are ready Kirishima reiterated you were forcing yourself of course but if you didn't do it no you never would. If I don't tell you now I don't think I ever will so, if you both can kinda just sit there and listen that would be great and maybe not ask any questions till the end. Katsuki wrapped his arms around your waist and pulled you into his lap. Your wish is our command you rolled your eyes they were both way too cheesy for their own good. Well, I'm not going to waste your time with the entire tragedy that is my life so here is the abridged version my mom died giving birth to me, so I was raised technically by my dad. But he hired people to deal with me most of my life I don't know him that well. I only ever saw him if he called for me this was far from the worst of it so you wished they would stop looking at you like that. Me and Shindo met when I was 16 he had kept trying to join the LOV but my dad kept throwing him out he was too young so. I took an interest in anyone my dad didn't like was okay in my book we started dating after 3 weeks of knowing each other and for 2 years it was great he was the only source of happiness in my life. 
you felt a gentle squeeze on your shoulder. You reminded yourself that they were right there. You took a few deep breaths smiling when you felt Kirishima's hand against your cheek. You knew he meant that to be comforting, but it wasn't helping the way he intended as you were about to start. Talking again you felt his pheromones. He was actively releasing calming pheromones. Thank you. Both boys smiled as they watched your breathing return to normal. We are so proud of you Pebble. With renewed confidence you continued once he turned 18 and finally joined the LOV. I became his punching bag I wanted to leave every single day but I stayed I just wanted him to be happy and I thought if I could do better I would get the old Shindo back once we moved out I managed to get a job down the block from our loft as a pop. To some tech keep all you laughed you couldn't even remember your old boss's name it didn't matter he wasn't around anymore. One day I went into heat at work it was the weirdest thing I had been taking my medication as I was supposed to so there was no way I should have gone into heat but my boss and co-workers didn't have as good of a grip on his alpha as you guys do both. Alphas could not help the growls that were coming out of their mouths they knew how dangerous it was for unclaimed omegas to work I'm sure I don't have to tell you what happened next you could feel the tears welling up in your eyes but you refused let them fall you had to finish. When I got home I told Shindo everything that happened he was furious and he blamed it all on me he accused me of cheating on him he said that I deserved what happened for being so irresponsible with my medications after that. He had my heat room added to the loft so that he had somewhere to put me so that he could keep an eye on me he made me quit my job and kept me locked in the apartment until he finally got tired of my whining and let me get the job working for you too. Both alphas paused not sure if they were allowed to speak just yet they wanted you to finish you can talk now. You have been with him since you were 16. And you are what 23 now? That means he took advantage of you for 6 years. You nodded at Kirishima there was no good explanation you knew he was looking for one but you just didn't have a good one to give him. Katsuki sighed this was almost as bad as he anticipated and they hadn't even gotten to tell you what Ida had found out did he only lock you in that room during your heat? Or were there other times? Any time he wanted to. If I was in heat, if he wanted to punish me for something, sometimes if he didn't want to look at me. Kirishima and Katsuki exchanged looks Mina had not told them about a room like that they would have to send her back in to look at it they wanted pictures did your dad know about this? The real question is did my dad care about what happened? And the answer to that question is no as long as I wasn't his problem he didn't care what happened to me Katsuki did his best to suppress the growl building in his chest. What's the longest amount of time he kept you in that room? Kirishima was almost afraid to know the answer but if he didn't ask now he would lose his nerve and they really needed to know. Probably three months I remember it was just after Christmas that I had embarrassed him while out to dinner with some of his friends and when I got out the cherry blossoms were blooming so. I am pretty sure it was three months you could feel the pheromones in the room change from calming to furious you could tell both alphas were inches from losing it. Katsuki had to get himself under control his omega did not need either of them going feral right now they would formulate a plan with their friends later to deal with this. Right now their only job was helping you and you needed both of them plus they had a few things to tell you too. We are so sorry that we didn't find you sooner if we had you would not have had to go through any of this that made you laugh were they seriously blaming themselves their hearts were too big for their chests. When I was 16 you both were 22 it would not have gone the way you wanted it to. Is she calling us dirty old men cats? Kirishima smiled as he relentlessly started to tickle your sides they had discovered how ticklish you were in your fist few weeks working for them. I think she did IG he gripped your middle tighter so you couldn't squirm away from them tickling you himself every so often. Hey dude, SS stop come on I I I see can't breathe you were laughing so hard you were crying. You were crying happy tears. You were trying so hard not to break down that you held it all in and now that it was finally out you felt so much lighter was that why they did this? Do you think she's sorry cats? He shook his head nah. No way in hell is she sorry but she will be. The two of them continued tickling you for another 15 minutes by the time they had taken mercy on you. You were completely out of breath that's not fair you both suck. They both laughed life ain't always fair princess Katsuki smirked and added if you want to see how we suck all you had to do was ask like a good girl. Your eyes went wide as you buried your face in a pillow he did not just say that out loud in front of you. His mate was right there. I regret inviting you into my nest. Both alphas feigned offense and Katsuki leaned over kissing the crown of your head oh come on we are so happy to be the first alphas in your pretty little nest. He reached for the closest pillow and hit both of them with all the strength you had thank you both for listening and then for helping me to take my mind off of it. They both smiled at you it was Kirishima's turn to speak up when we said we would be here for anything we meant it whatever you want or need if it is within our ability we will give it to you. You looked at them searching for any hint of them lying to you like some cruel prank but you found not no evidence of a lie the only thing you saw was two earnest alphas with sincerity painted all over their faces okay you win I believe you. That's good because it is just about dinner time so we should order some delivery how do you feel about ramen? Katsuki asked as he pulled up some delivery app on his phone. 
Ramen sounds perfect both alphas watched as you scrolled through looking for what to order they couldn't tell you now maybe tomorrow they would tell you everything Ida had told them they did not want to see that smile leave your face again tonight. Both alphas exchanged a knowing glance they would most definitely tell you everything tomorrow. It's been three fucking days, cats, we have to tell her. She runs around here completely ignorant of everything he did the last two weeks. Ijiru pleaded to his mate as he paced in their den you had been doing so well. Better than either of them could have hoped for you finally started coming out of your room. More and more each day this included when they were home. Your wounds had almost completely healed, and the only time you outwardly struggled was at night luckily. When that happened, he would walk to their den and wake them one or both of them would then walk you back to your nest they would cuddle with you in your nest till you fell asleep. Only sometimes did they have to use their pheromones. Do you want to ruin all her progress? Do you want to see her cry again? Cause I sure as hell don't she's been happy. Who the hell are we to take that away right now? We care about her plus. She deserves to know we are in no position to make those decisions for her. We are not her alphas as much as you want to think we are. Ida wanted us to tell her days ago. Ugh. Back Hugo huffed before disappearing into their closet. All he was trying to do was make you happy. Why was that such a bad thing? There was no telling how you would react to knowing you had been drugged they didn't even know how long he had drugged you plus. There were still so many unknowns, so why worry about you without the whole picture? Edda will be back in a few days we need to tell them soon so keeping it a secret isn't an option. Ijiru pleaded with his mate he desperately needed to get him on board before it was too late. You had been getting up earlier and earlier each day. Finally feeling comfortable in your new home both alphas had been so kind you wanted to start showing them how much you appreciated it you wanted to show them you could care for them as an omega who needed to help her alphas. It took no time for you to figure out what to make for breakfast Katsuki and Ijiru were both fairly traditional men. So miso soup and green onion rolled omelets with white rice would be perfect you grabbed each alpha's favorite tea and set it to steep while you went to wake them up. As you approached their door you could hear them arguing. You had never heard them so much as disagree. So hearing their argument was utterly unexpected the other weird thing was Iji was the one who sounded mad. Not cats you could only make partial sentences. Because she deserves to know. Deserve to know what? Are they keeping something from me? Am I finally becoming a burden to them and their relationship? Is coming back to see them? Who's coming back? Are they going to hand you back over to Shindo? Did they offer them money? Weapons, drugs, Shindo and your dad had no shortage of any of those things. We can't keep it a secret. Catching every other sentence was not helping all it was doing was increase your anxiety. And why hadn't you heard Katsuki while you were standing there? He wasn't exactly the quiet one. He was either very mad or speaking so low that you couldn't hear him you had no idea which option you would have preferred Ijiru sounded exhausted were you the cause. You convinced yourself to knock on the door when Katsuki finally spoke up. God damn it, Iji. We don't have any other choice how the hell do you expect us to tell them something like that? That final sentence confirmed everything you needed to know they didn't want or need you around anymore it was foolish for you to ever think that you could make a home here they only helped you cause they thought they had something to gain they had everything to gain. And you had everything to lose what a fool you were. You couldn't even will the tears away the more you tried to stop them. The faster they fell down your face this was more than you could bear the white knights of your story had turned into the evil kings you knew there was no hope of them ever returning your feelings. But you didn't think that they would hate you so much that they would send you back to them you sunk to your knees and covered your mouth in a poor attempt to muffle the sobs that racked through your chest the last thing you wanted was for them to find you crying. Then they would look at you with those eyes, and you might just want to forget. Ijiru quickly cut Katsuki off what was that noise? That smell? Were you awake? It was barely 7.30 there was no way you had woken up already you must be having a nightmare if that was the case. You would be here any minute. Think you can put this on the back burner for now. They need us right now, Ijiru asks, taking a deep breath. Katsuki rolled his eyes Iji was just mad that he was right they would tell you when they felt you could handle it. Which was not right now whatever Iji, do what you want, but don't say I didn't warn you. Ijiru didn't so much as dignify his mate with a response he was so damn stubborn there was no talking to him when he got like this he opened the door, prepared to receive you, only to find you curled up on the floor sobbing. He quickly knelt beside you and collected you in his arms oh, Pebble, was the nightmare that bad. You hate how it felt to be in his arms especially now, when everything felt like it was crashing down around you. His arms felt like the net that caught it all so when you were ready, you could put it all back together again you wanted to push him away. You wanted off his lap, but you couldn't make yourself do it his pheromones didn't help your present situation either. SS and stop PPPL please don't do this to me, you plead shakily. He gripped your chin and made you look at him. His eyes were filled with worry how could he be such a convincing actor. You'd think he cared if you didn't know any better. Pebble, what happened? Was it a nightmare? He didn't try calling you, did he? You shook your head if he was going to keep this up. It would only hurt so much more when they made you leave just tell me. Please if you guys want me to go, I'll go I can leave today if you need me to the last thing I want is to be a burden. Both alphas were confused where in the world had you gotten that crazy idea. 
Why do you think we want you to leave? You sniffled and looked up at him. And the second you made eye contact, you completely regretted it. He always looked at you like you were an oasis in the middle of the desert. At least that's what you fooled yourself into thinking. His eyes always made him seem so honest you could hardly believe he was lying. I heard you guys fighting I wanted to surprise you. So I made you breakfast when I came to get you I was the one surprised you both don't have to keep lying anymore. Realization dawned on him. And he glared at Katsuki he knew something like this would happen that's why he had wanted to come clean days ago oh, Pebble, you seem to have gotten your wires crossed that's not what we were arguing about at all he cooed. You couldn't help the hope that bloomed inside your chest, it wasn't. Katsuki sighed and kneeled down next to both of you know, Princess it wasn't neither of us wants you to go anywhere but back into your nest where you're safe you could stay here till you get old and grey for all I care. Your tears finally slowed down as you let their words wash over you then what aren't you telling me? The two alphas looked at each other and sighed. You made us breakfast, didn't you? Let's go eat while we talk, okay. You didn't like where this was going or the look they shared. But you stood up and followed both men to the kitchen while they settled down at the table. You placed jasmine tea in front of Kastuki and Oolong in front of Ijeru. They both sipped their tea and smiled, princess. This is amazing, thank you. Just tell me now please. Ijiru looked at Katsuki. Now they had no choice you had every right to know especially since they had no idea how much it would affect you down the line it hadn't even finished all the tests he wanted to do because of how weak you were. Okay, okay, princess, make yourself a cup of tea and sit down I'll tell you everything you want to know he motioned to the chairs across from him we've been putting off telling us some of the results from the tests later ran we oh, what the fuck? He glared at Ijiru as he neatly tucked his elbow back at his side fine, fine, I didn't want to worry you just yet you've been so happy. You took the seat across from them and gently sipped on your matcha you had completely forgotten that there were things the doctor had wanted to tell you am I dying. You both are looking at me like I am gonna die. TCH, it ain't dying. Yet it is a bit more complicated than that Ijiru had half a mind to muzzle the angry blonde again. This was no time for his shitty attitude despite how rude he sounds. He is right Ida had a number of concerns. It's like a band-aid you rip it off quickly, I can handle it okay. The biggest thing is you haven't been taking care of yourself that's not your fault but ignoring your omega instincts have been making you really sick he said the lack of hormones in your system should have killed you. You diverted your eyes. You knew he was right. He wasn't saying anything you didn't already know you hadn't even been to a doctor since your first heat and that was 11 years ago. That look on your face says you know what we're talking about right Pebble? You nodded staring down into the milky green water hoping the answers you wanted were at the bottom of that cup. You were in a near constant state of drop it had no idea how you were up and functioning every day he said you should have been bed bound, let alone have normal heats. Your forehead crinkled with confusion yay you dropped during your heats but that was it every other day you were fine my heats come like clockwork I think you are both exaggerating a bit if I was in a constant drop my heats would not come at all. That statement sent shivers down both alpha's spines during your heat, did you ever take any medication? Katsuki asks. Yeah most omegas do they're just painkillers I know you have never been with omegas but our heats are incredibly painful especially when I shared them with him he had a tendency to be a little rough. They both chose to ignore that latter part of that sentence in favor of continuing with what they had to tell you Pebble. Those weren't painkillers when Ida got your hormone levels back. He was completely certain you did not have a natural heat he ran a tox screen on you those weren't natural heats. That asshole's been giving you heat inducers we're not sure for how long. As the last words left Ijiru's mouth your cup fell from your hands and it shattered on the floor he's been drugging me. Katsuki quickly moved to clean up the broken pieces of the cup so you didn't hurt yourself I'm sorry, princess. I really am I wish we had better news for you Ida is gonna try to see if he can figure out how long he's been doing it. You laughed. This was completely unbelievable how was this your life? What had you done so wrong in a previous life that this was the hand you were dealt after hearing all this you wished they really were just kicking you out? So most of the medications that he gave you were hormone replacements he wanted to get you to a baseline so that he could figure out what the next step was he wants you to get back to where you need to be as safe as possible. You could not believe what you were hearing had everything really been a lie your heat. Was nothing sacred. Did he feel like he had to meddle with every aspect of your life? Even something as personal as this was a lie he forced you through painful heats for what? So he had an excuse to lock you away. So he could have complete control. Pebble, can you say something? You're scaring me. You knew they were still talking to you but it was nothing but white noise your brain was going a million miles a minute in a poor attempt to make sense of everything you had just heard there was nothing that you could do that would make it stop. Princess, do you think you can come back to us now? It'll be okay we will help you through this together we promise. That was Katsuki you would know that voice anywhere you wished you could hear what he was saying but he sounded like he was underwater were you dissociating? It was a fact that Shindo was abusive that much was clear but for some reason knowing this was how far he was willing to go was just something you could not understand some small part of you was holding out hope that he did love you. Just in his own twisted way knowing this seemed to cause that hope to vanish completely. Cat she's panicking. 
Ijuru whines we have to do something. Who's panicking? Now that you thought about it breathing was difficult it felt like an elephant was standing on your chest before you could do anything you felt yourself being picked up from the chair the only thing you felt now were large warm arms as they wrapped around you in the smell of fresh rain. Kiri was holding you you thought that for just this one moment you could choose what you wanted you closed your eyes and relaxed against his chest allowing yourself to be surrounded by his scent. There you go, Pebble, just relax I've got you. You knew this was him trying to soothe you and he deserved a response but before you could figure out what to say a cool cloth was placed over your eyes mmph that felt really good. You'll be okay Pebble I'm not leaving you neither of us are. You believed him. For the first time you actually believed that you would be okay as long as you could stay in these arms as long as you could smell them everything would be okay see can you stay home today. Both alphas smiled seeing as you had clearly calmed down and knowing that your only request was for them to stay home made their alphas sing they would more than happily spend all of their days at your side you can curl up with us in our den if you would like. If not, could we go into your nest? You want me in your den? Both alphas laughed and nodded how could they not want you in their den? The mere thought that your scent would linger on their sheets was enough to rile them up. You nodded your head their den sounded like the most heavenly place on earth a room that smelled like both of them how could you say no? You knew you should be angry. They were keeping things from you and who knows how many other things they knew but wouldn't tell you but today proved that they would tell you eventually. And that was enough for you. Katsuki smiled and followed you both into their den doing his best to ignore the constant vibrations from his pocket the extras could handle it. Nothing that was going on was more important than you all of his attention today was going to be directed at you and what you needed he went into their closet and pulled out some of the softer blankets they had for the winter he tucked both you and IG into bed with a smile all he wanted was for you to be comfortable if the blissed out expression on your face was anything to go by he was doing okay. Thank you. Alpha you mumbled before burying your face further into Ijiro's chest. Both males shared a look hearing you refer to their designations. That did things to them things they care not think about right now neither of them had ever taken an Omega before. They had always deemed them as too much trouble or too fragile for them they had each other and that was more than they had any right to ask the world for but after hearing you call them Alpha, they had no idea how they survived all this time without you. Rest up Omega we will both be here when you wake up. Katsuki smiled and kissed the crown of your head. I'll be with you the whole time. Ijiru reassured and pulled you in impossibly closer we can talk more after you nap you were hit with a lot today. And you should relax you nodded and relaxed against his chest thank you alpha that was the last thing you said before falling asleep. You see why I wanted to wait. This whole thing could have been avoided Ijiru refused to look up from you as he rubbed small circles into the small of your back wishing he could ease all the tension from your muscles. Nothing to say, he grumbled. Finally unable to ignore his phone he was about to throw it across the room, it was getting on his last nerves. Just answer them, cats. 13 missed calls from Pikachu. 4 missed calls from Tape Face. 8 missed calls from Deku. What the fuck he continued to scroll through the seemingly endless stream of notifications. Pikachu what the fuck dude. Answer your damn phone. Pikachu Toshi managed to capture a LOV member. Tape Face dude we need you there so we can try to get some intel from him. Deku I get you have faith in us but you can't ignore all of us. This kid is frisky. Deku he's escaped twice already. Thank you Kiri. Cats. One of you has to be around. Pikachu dude you have five minutes before I electrocute him. Tape face dude I think he's serious. Pikachu two minutes and I can't promise he will survive. Cats oi. Calm down BLD lust isn't a good look on you Pikachu. Cats we kinda have our hands full at the moment can you? Call Taoya. Pikachu if our king finally where the hell have you been? Tape face Taoya has his hands full at the moment. Cats with what? Pikachu we didn't ask need you now the quicker the better. Cats and no. It's refreshing to see you so serious. About work for once. Pikachu he hurt Toshi can you please hurry. Cats what's wrong with eye bags? Tape face he's with Ida he has a GSW to the right shoulder. Hopefully he will be awake soon and back on his feet in a week. Cats okay I get it I'm on my way get my tools ready. Set up the branding equipment. I'm assuming you have. I'm in the chair now. Deku yes he assume we've been ready for hours. FR King Extras Katsuki pocketed his phone check the messages when they wake up they have a LOV member at the warehouse I'm gonna go take care of it I need to see what we can find out. Ijiru wanted to protest his leaving. Any of their friends could handle this without him. But something on his face said that this was more personal than he was letting on he knew that look in his eye he was out for BLD did they tell you who it was? Katsuki easily slipped into a pair of black jeans and a sweater now they didn't say who probably what they want to find out just said that he hurt eye bags pretty bad and Pikachu is livid don't know how long Deku and Tapeface can keep him from killing him. Ijiru understood now it made sense okay. Just let me know what you guys find out when she wakes up. I'll just tell her something came up at work she'll understand. Katsuki smiled and kissed both of your foreheads I love you IG. I love you too cats. Ijiru couldn't help the sinking feeling in his chest as he watched his mate walk out the door maybe he was just worrying too much. Because they didn't do things like this without each other hopefully he'll come home soon he'd feel much better with him home right. 
Katsuki rolled his eyes he hated coming to this side of town. But it was the only place they had where no one would bother them the last thing he needed right now was distractions. Distractions lead to mistakes and mistakes led to getting caught if he was to get caught now what would you do on your own? Whether he was officially courting you or not he would never leave you alone. Katsuki slipped his black mask over the lower half of his face and slowly rolled up the metal doors as he walked into the warehouse they had. He was met with the overwhelming scent of iron clearly Pikachu had his fun before he even arrived. He couldn't blame him though you didn't want to know what he would do had it been Ijiru who was injured he should commend Sparky on his level of restraint that was a conversation for later though I couldn't let him get to big ahead. As he approached he was surprised at how few people were actually there the usual suspects were present of course but the Deku was on his own he had expected that half and half bastard to be glued to his side or even some of his men he brought them. everywhere after taking stock of who was there he finally saw who had shot eye bags what the fuck what was he a kid. There was no way he could be older than 19 and that was being generous this is what you picked up. Their little errand boy. No way this stupid kid knows anything useful, Katsuki growled. He found us if we are being technical about it Denki replied as he stepped out from behind Siro who was clearly trying to keep him from doing any further damage to the kid we were just doing standard recon and Fukuoka when he came out and attacked Toshi we weren't doing anything honest we wouldn't have even bothered with him if we hadn't caught the symbol on his arm. Katsuki looked up and down his arms for the symbol Sparky mentioned there it was on his right bicep the very symbol all LOV members had but something wasn't right why was there a star at it? That wasn't something he had not seen before Deku what's the deal with that? Deku shrugged they had seen several symbols added onto the LOV tattoos but the star was completely new to him I have some guys looking into it now but nothing has come up I asked Shoto to look into it along with Taoya. Katsuki nodded. There was no time to worry about any of that now he simply stood there and watched as the young boy continued to struggle against the restraints that kept him firmly in place he was pulling against the restraints that kept his head in place but it was to no avail Deku was a master with rope and knots come on, what do you want from me? He screamed, almost knocking the chair over. Katsuki smirked and kicked the chair over so he was laying on his back staring at the ceiling you don't get to make demand. Kid the only reason you're alive is to answer my questions and after what you did to Sparky's mate you really should count your blessings. Katsuki could tell the kid was doing everything he could to bury his fear but Katsuki could smell it coming off him in waves he lowered his foot square on the kid's chest and pushed down come on kid. Let's start nice and easy who the hell are you and why were you tailing my guys? He coughed as he felt the increasing weight on his chest. It was getting more and more difficult to breathe as the seconds ticked by cough frk. My name cough is yo Kenji. Katsuki looked over at the kid where has he heard that surname before? If he wasn't so annoyed at having to be dragged out of his den. Maybe he would have made the connection but he desperately wanted this to be over Kenji huh? You're what? 18 maybe 19 years old. Kenji grimaced and nodded yay. I just turned 19. Katsuki sighed he was right. This kid probably knew next to nothing just some random new recruit so why were you tailing my guys? They said you'd been following them for close to 3 hours. Then you attacked them out of nowhere and from my understanding it was completely unprovoked do you care to explain yourself? Kenji did his best to follow the voice around the room trying to gauge where he was but it was no good he moved with every word and he was doing it on purpose he wanted him on edge so he would be more likely to talk he couldn't help but hesitate about how much he could reveal without feeling the wrath from his bosses I was only doing what I was told they told me to keep an eye on any enemy Yakuza that entered our territory then once I confirmed who he was I was told to deal with it I didn't know who he was. Kataki smirk now answers I find that really hard to believe with all the other Yakuza that use Fukuoka only one of my guys got shot this seems a bit more personal. I just joined. All I was doing was trying to follow what my family expected me to do Kenji side he didn't have much of a choice right now but you're right it wasn't a coincidence they had me tailing Hawks so when he met up with the purple haired elf I was told to eliminate him Kenji side. Why tail one of your own? Kenji couldn't help but laugh that is a joke if I ever heard one Hawks isn't one of us and he never will be but no one will believe me. Katsuki let out a breath he didn't know he had been holding. At least he had some more time but not much the LOV would be onto them soon and once they were they would know what they were trying to do he pulled Siro close and whispered. Go check with Aizawa first and then Hawks. They could both be compromised Siro nodded understanding what was being asked of him and quickly left the room. Okay good boy alright kid. Now I need a little more than that. Why do your bosses have you out patrolling? Kenji clamped his mouth shut. He was not about to reveal that what kind of guy couldn't keep an eye on one lousy woman it was embarrassing. Katsuki sighed this was all going so well oh well. Time for the fun to begin Sparky, you know how I told you to wait. I think I'm done making you wait. Go on ahead, start it out nice and slow we want to make this last don't we? The sheer amount of excitement Katsuki saw in his friend's eyes was enough to make even him worry for the younger man he learned early on not to get in between Sparky and electrocuting someone Yamina cats. 
Katsuki nodded and watched him quickly get everything set up. He was surprised when Sparky didn't shock himself. He watched as he meticulously hooked everything up. Pads and wires were attached to his temples, neck, chest, anywhere that was easily accessible. After he had attached 10 different pads, he pulled out a big gag and waved it in front of his face. Okay, you have one more chance to answer the boss's questions before I put this in your mouth and shock the answers out of you. Kenji was trembling from his spot on the floor. He was not ready for this. Shindo had not prepared him for this. All he was supposed to do was search a small section of their territory, and he couldn't even do that apparently. He waited too long to answer because before he knew it the gag was being fastened behind his head he tried desperately to say anything but it was muffled by the rubber in his mouth. Katsuki's test as he kicked him in the ribs you should have cooperated earlier there is no stopping him once he gets started Katsuki watched as he wasted no time turning it to a modest 1000 V quickly administering the first shock. The first wave lasted about three minutes. He motioned for the electricity to be cut and he approached the kid once again. Are you ready to cooperate yet? Katsuki chuckles. He watched as the kid desperately pulled at his hands, probably wanting to wipe the snot and tears from his face. But after a few seconds, he stopped and nodded his head. Katsuki smirked as the kid was breaking just a little bit more and he would be putty in his hands. He unlocked the gag from his mouth and allowed him to catch his breath. Now answers don't make me keep asking you. Kenji sighed one of the commanders lost his little plaything so we have been out trying to find them they have had every available man looking for them for days Katsuki did everything to school his facial expression. There was no way he could let this kid find anything out the LOV had no idea where you had gone. They thought you just ran away that was good for them cause it gave them just a little more time to figure out exactly how to proceed. Plaything A. I'm assuming you really mean his mate. Katsuki inquired, suddenly feeling grateful that Aijiru was at home. Nah, they're not mates he's just keeping them around to keep the boss happy and as long as they are together his position is secure their dad doesn't even know they're missing yet that's why he had me out looking that was information they could use. So Shindo was keeping it quiet that you were missing. If that information was to get revealed maybe it would push things into their favor. Why not mate with them? Wouldn't it make it harder to lose them that way? Kenji grimaced he had already said too much and why did this guy care so much about you it was like he was personally invested in you Denki was not happy with how long he was taking to answer and turned his machine up to 15 OV he flipped the switch and started the electric current. Katsuki laughed as he watched the kid flounder on the floor desperately trying to free any of his limbs from his restraints after three minutes he motioned for it to be stopped if you don't want him to do it again I really suggest you continue to cooperate. Kenji was on the verge of breaking this was too much every single muscle in his body was on fire. It was like his body wouldn't listen to him his muscles were spasming out of control no matter how much he tried to relax it just got worse he said if he made it with them no one else would want them he makes a lot of money when they're in heat. Katsuki's eyes widened with fury why hadn't you said anything about that? Had you even known? He would have to talk to Ada about the effects that drug had on memory. But they would deal with that as it came he had to finish this does their father know he does this? Kenji searched his tormentor's face he really was not understanding why he cared so much about some lowly omega he didn't even know unless he did know you. Hadn't you just gotten a job recently? Do you know why? And why else would you care so much about them? You are in no position to be asking questions right now. Katsuki growled, refusing to let this kid figure out anything from him so unless you want this to get a lot worse, I suggest you cut your bullshit and answer my damn questions does their father know her partner is whoring her out to his men. Kenji laughed at the alpha's anger it was clear that he had some kind of connection to you and he would figure out what it was Shindo would be pleased to know whatever information there was, maybe even pleased enough to forgive him for getting kidnapped wherever you were this alpha sure knew where it was I'm sure he does know. It's not like he cares either way they're an omega the only thing they're good for is giving the boss an alpha air. Katsuki couldn't contain his anger and kicked him in the ribs he had kicked him so hard it sent him flying across the room you're pissing me off kid I don't need the details I just need direct answers Shindo will do anything to get them back so I suggest you back off when they realize I'm missing they'll come looking for me I'm not just some random shrimp Shindo is my older brother Katsuki swore under his breath of course that's where he heard that name before all that meant is they couldn't afford to let him go that's if they find you kid this warehouse is pretty secluded besides. If you were Shindo's kid brother, don't you think you would be better at not getting caught Kenji's face soured as he took in what was said he was right after all. He will probably be happy to be rid of you he seems to have a lot on his plate right now watching after some loser kid brother seems like it would just get in his way I think I'm doing him a favor just by dealing with you myself Katsuki watched fight drain from his eyes and he was completely broken no one needs someone as useless as you around. All you are is a liability. Anything else you want to tell me? No matter what you say, the second you get back they'll kill you anyway so it can't get any worse right? Katsuki smirked as he stepped over him so that he was looking down at him. Kenji sighed they're planning a raid I don't know which group all I know is Shindo was bragging about it it'll be on the last Friday of the month at around 2am one of their rivals has a pretty prominent business in Musutafu and that's where they suspect they're hiding. 
Now that was something they could use he would have to arrange a meeting later this week to plan and to thank Ibags later this kid was more useful than he originally thought he was sure the kid knew more but how much more could he push him today? He didn't want to actually kill the kid just yet a raid really. Now that's interesting anything else your big brother was spouting off about. Kenji sighed they have some big meetings with the Todoroki clan this week to planet Shindo said there was no way they would be able to deal with them alone they apparently had a leadership change in the last few years and had been giving the LOV hard time now it was the time to put a stop to it. Katsuki nodded towards Deku, sending him off he would need him to go confirm this with half and half then reach out to Hawks and Taoya because if the LOV was gaining traction and forming their alliance with NG that could possibly present a problem for them they would be able to deal with the LOV when they were on their own but if they joined up with the Todorokis it would be much trickier I appreciate how open you have been as a show of good faith I won't kill you you will be kept here though. Can't have you running back blabbing to your brother and the rest of the LOV. Kenji couldn't say that he was surprised after everything he had given up hope of being able to leave this warehouse. He was surprised that he was being kept alive so what are you gonna do with me? Katsuki smirked and started sending off several text messages we're gonna keep you just like that except in one of the back rooms we will blindfold and keep you till after this raid is over killing kids isn't really my thing even though I really should Sparky will have my ass for that later but I think you have more to tell me. So I'll keep you locked away here and come back in a few days with my mate. Kenji wanted to protest but a gag was stuffed in his mouth and he lost his ability to see shortly after it won't be so bad you know it'll just be a few weeks then we will decide what to do with you Kenji tried to fight as his restraints were undone but he was quickly dragged into a room in the far back he was quickly shoved to the floor and hooked to chains there someone will check on you a couple times a day try not to die yeah before Kenji could respond the door closed with a resounding clank and the lock was put in place he was completely alone till they decided to show back up again he was in for a long couple of weeks. Katsuki walked back out to the main area to find Denki cleaning up and putting things away you can go home. Pikachu I know that if it were a Jiru or Y and that was hurt this is the last place I would want to be take a couple days and get him back on his feet. Denki looked at him doubtfully no way. You need me right now, especially if what the kid said is true a raid is serious business so there's no time for any of us to step away. Katsuki smiled and put his hand on his shoulder there are plenty of people that I can lean on while you take some time I know Hitoshi is probably miserable by himself. The use of his mate's name threw him off Katsuki must be really worried only if you promise to call if you need anything. Who's in charge here, me or you? He laughed I will don't worry so much. You big old worry ward I'll call Takoyami to keep an eye on this kid and we will set up a meeting for later this week there is nothing else to be done now, he assured, pushing him out of the room. Okay, okay, cats, I'll go make sure you say hello to Ijiru and why, and for me Katsuki smiled and watched him leave I'll stop by to see them this week I miss them. As everyone left he took that moment to relax as he weighed his options there were any number of people he could call in Aizawa, which was his first choice he'd known the older Alpha since he was a kid he had worked closely with his mother for many years he shot off a text message to him talking to him would do some good right now there are so many variables that he was struggling to come up with a solid plan. He pulled out his phone and decided to check in with Ijiru and you while he waited. How's our Omega doing? Cats, they're doing okay they have had. A few nightmares but I got them. Back to sleep Kiri. About Shindo again. Cats, what else would it be? Kiri, well I got some good news apparently that. Kid they found is Shindo's kid brother, Cats. And he had plenty of info to share, Cats. She never mentioned he had a brother Kiri. I'm not sure she knew apparently during her heats. He was selling her out to the other alphas of the LOV the only good thing is they don't know that. We have them they're still looking all over the place cats. He did what? How did he get away with that Kiri? Apparently the father doesn't care he just wants an alpha that can inherit the title cats. Let's kill him what are we waiting for? Kiri. It's more complex than cats. Cats. Kiri. Times 5 minutes later. Babes. Where'd you go are you okay? Kiri. Times 10 minutes later. Okay. Not funny you need to answer me Kiri. Times 20 minutes later. If you don't answer I'm calling Midori Akiri. Tajiru could not stand it anymore why had he suddenly stopped answering? What happened? It was not like Katsuki to let his phone die, especially when he was away without him if you hadn't been in his lap, cuddling the hell out of him. He'd be on his way to the warehouse himself instead. He sent off several texts hoping one of their friends was still there now the only thing he could do was wait. Luckily Denki had not been too far away when he got the text from Ijiru he would probably be the one to get back the fastest Takoyami was still about 30 minutes out and he could be back in 10 before he knew it he was walking back into the warehouse cat. You really shouldn't make Ijiru worry like this and you definitely shouldn't stop answering him are you there? Denki himself was starting to get worried. Katsuki was there when he left why wasn't he there now? The further back he went into the warehouse the more uneasy he felt there was a smell he didn't recognize lingering in the air he sniffed around for a few more minutes before he recognized it was gunpowder did cat shoot someone. 
He got a little distracted by the what-ifs that he didn't notice when he walked into a large pool of BLD Denki finally registered as he heard the soft squish as he lifted his foot up from the puddle when he looked down he saw his friend with two gunshot wounds one to his shoulder and one to his stomach neither of which is particularly fatal but how was he going to tell you or worse tell I drew the first person he called was the doc. He needed to get here as a P. he shot off a few other text messages before applying as much pressure as he could to the wound. Cats, you'll be okay just stay with me, okay. Denki mumbled trying his best not to worry as that wouldn't do any of them any good right now Katsuki was willing himself to answer Sparky but his mouth wasn't cooperating with him. Ada got there in record time and started to treat him, giving Denki time to respond to Ijiru. Dude it is so not good Denks. Cats got shot Denks. What? How? Kiri. Dude, your gas is as good. As mine right now me and Ida are gonna bring him home okay Denks. Have people sweep that warehouse Kiri. I want answers before tonight is over Kiri. Aizawa will be there in 5 Deku is calling. Shoto and Taya we will get it figured. Out okay I denks. Two shootings in one day. That's unheard of Kiri. Why was he alone? Kiri. We had just finished and we were starting. To look into some of the stuff we found. Out and then he sent me to be with Toshi. I'm sorry I I knew I shouldn't have left denks. It's not your fault why don't you bring Hitoshi here. We can give you one of the extra rooms Kiri. That sounds good I'll make the arrangements denks. Be safe Kiri. I drew looked down at you in his arms how was he going to explain this to you? He was used to cats getting hurt but you weren't it had happened more times in the last few years than he could count but it never got easier he knew you guys weren't officially courting but he liked to think you had grown attached to both of them. The last few days you had been struggling so much he didn't want to think how this could set you back he thought about not telling you. But that would probably make things worse. Almost like you sensed his turmoil you looked up at him through your lashes and gave him the sweetest smile you yawned and buried your face in his chest everything okay I drew. He buried his fingers in your hair and kissed the crown of your head. He had two options and neither of them were favorable right now. Where's Katsuki? Is he making food? Ijiru sighed. He knew there was no hiding it from you. Cats would be home any minute so he really should tell you before that pebble. Cats had to leave a little bit ago for work. You searched his face. Concern growing in the pit of your stomach. Is he okay? Did he get hurt? Ijiru laughed. You were so intuitive you always knew what was going on. Yes, pebble. He got hurt. He got hurt really bad but Ida and Denki are bringing him here right now so we will know more soon. Warm tears trailed down your cheeks you could not even imagine what could have happened to him if he had just given up looking into Shindo and your dad. He never would have gotten hurt the fact that Ijiru wasn't furious with you was shocking. He was probably still processing everything and once he did he would be done with you, they both would who hurt him. Some kid Denki had gotten a hold of from the LOV apparently he was Shindo's little brother did you know he had one? Your eyes went wide, Kenji was around. That was the last thing you wanted. You could only hope he would keep his mouth shut he knew things that you never wanted to get out. Ijiru gently poked your nose to get you to focus on him Pebble. He asks are you okay? Looking up at Ijiru, you could have considered lying to him but was it worth it? Why yeah, I'm fine. Giving you a raised brow. He noticed the slight change in your scent after mentioning Kenji he sighs and pets her hair you can tell us when you're ready. You nod softly and twiddle your fingers you really hope Kenji wasn't the one who shot Katsuki or worse he escaped and told Shindo. Denki was rushing back why wasn't Katsuki answering his damn phone? He just left. Nothing could have happened to him, right? That kid was so close to death that he probably could have seen the light so there's no way that kid got out without some kind of help this location was such a closely guarded secret that only those in the upper ranks even knew it existed that opened up another can of worms that he did not have time for right now he was stuck in damn traffic while his best friend was possibly dead in a ditch or he would be by the time he got back there if he didn't kill him Kiri definitely with cats better hope. He doesn't call Tetsu Tetsu cause if he does. There's no escape for the angry blonde. A 10 minute drive took almost 30 fucking minutes. He had promised Kiri he would hurry due to some sick twist of fate Kiri would kill him instead he quickly exited his car to find Monoma. What are you doing here? Did Kiri call you too? Monoma hung up his phone and quickly shoved it into his pocket he wasn't expecting the loud blonde to show up he was supposed to have been ugh Monoma didn't have time for this yay I heard Katz was ghosting everyone and I was close by. He laughed awkwardly as he followed him and he let Denki take the lead because he had a few text messages to send out since his phone call was so rudely interrupted. Monoma, call Ida, someone shot Katsuki, present time. You barely had any time to explore your new home, and now seemed as good a time as any Ijiru was in his office talking to several different people making arrangements for what you had no idea all you know is you finally made it down to the front entrance you relaxed because now, nah, at least, you would see him when he got home, and you wouldn't have to wait till they deemed him fit for visitors. You didn't know what to do, so you did the only thing you could think of, which was pace back and forth till you figured something else out. And willing Katsuki to walk through that door perfectly fine and definitely not full of bullet holes you knew that was a little naive. But you didn't want to see him injured because of you. Twenty minutes had passed, and your anxiety was building with each passing minute why wasn't he back yet? 
Was he that badly injured? You were about to go make Kiri tell you what was taking so long when the doorknob shook and not like someone turning a key like someone was trying to force it open you hesitantly stepped closer to the door, hoping to hear familiar voices luck was not in your favor today. You were met with two very male and very unfamiliar voices panic gripped your heart, and you stepped away from the door maybe Shindo really shot Katsuki, and now he found you impossible. They had promised that you were safe, they would never lie to you. The voices got louder with each passing second. And then you heard the telltale clicking of the lock you could feel it getting harder and harder to breathe, like a weight was slowly bearing down on your chest as the door completely swung open. Tears were freely falling down your face when the voices stopped. You looked up to see two huge men one with a mask covering the entire bottom part of his face and one with a large black bird on his shoulder if you weren't panicking, you would have laughed. Shoji and Takoyami shared a panicked look as they watched you curl in on yourself in front of them what were they supposed to do? They were here to keep you safe, not scare you and that's what they seemed to be doing Shoji stepped forward and kneeled in front of you hey hey you don't need to do all that we ain't gonna hurt you we went to school with I and cats were only here to keep you safe. You looked up from where you were hiding your face your E.C. eyes met with his grey ones and felt such a protective warmth that you had only felt when you were with Ijiru and Katsuki so they weren't here to take you away. As so you're not with Shindo. You searched his face, but since half of it was covered by his mask, there wasn't much to find but his eyes told most of what you needed to know they were quite expressive he looked remorseful for how he made you feel it was clear enough that he didn't know you were standing there waiting. Shoji shook his head my name is Mezu Shoji, but you can just call me Shoji and my friend with the bird is Fumikage Takoyami we should get you back upstairs it and Denki are still a bit of a ways out, okay, he said with what sounded like a smile. You looked between both men and sighed Shoji was right standing down here was just going to make you more anxious so you did what you knew Katsuki would have wanted and took Shoji's hand there you go. Nice and easy, sweetheart he helped you up carefully and led you back upstairs. So if more people are coming here, it must have been bad Shoji sighed he really didn't know how to answer you he hadn't had many answers himself. He was only doing what was asked of him I had asked him and Takoyami to come to the compound to take over as bodyguard duty for you Katsuki getting shot really shook him and he wanted to make sure that nothing were to happen to you. Noticing Shoji wasn't going to say anything. Takoyami stepped in why, and we don't know too much at this point in time. But I promise we will find out soon as soon as we know anything. We will tell you if Kirishima and Bakugo have not already told you themselves, okay. You found the formality of his words oddly comforting he wasn't hiding anything from you. He wasn't trying to make you feel better he was just being honest thank you Takoyami he regarded you with a smile and kept walking with you so, what's your bird's name? You finally asked the question that was nagging in the back of your head. He laughed his name as Dark Shadow he's always with me you smiled and reached out to the feathers at the crest of his head he's quite soft. Before he could respond, Ijiru ran out of his office to meet you Pebble. You should wait up here not that I don't want you to explore I am happy that you feel comfortable enough to do so, but I really don't want you to go anywhere on your own right now. You nodded you understood why he was worried about you. But it was hard to just sit around and wait that's all you seemed to be able to do anymore. Sit and wait it was starting to become frustrating everyone else you came in contact with seemed to be useful in some way but not you you sighed as you watched him take a seat back at the kitchen island. Looking over maps maybe. You couldn't really tell. Maybe building plans but you knew even if you asked, he wouldn't tell you he seemed stressed. And you wished you weren't so useless. But you had no idea how to help if you were a better Omega, you'd be able to help your no, no, help the pair of Alphas. Why don't you go relax? Standing there is just gonna make you anxious, okay Pebble? You sighed you knew without a doubt he was shooing you away so he could talk to the three wait. When did that guy get here? He had very similar hair to Ijiru, but instead of a fiery red it was white their pheromones smelled similar maybe they were related. As you watched everyone whisper to each other, you had an idea what was the one thing that always relaxed grumpy alphas. Nests. You would build them the best nest ever, right in their den you knew they wouldn't mind it you would take yours apart and reassemble it in their den so when Katsuki came home, he'd have a safe place to recover. Without any words, you ran off towards your room to gather everything you needed. Ijiru smiled as he watched. I don't know if I like that look on her face but I'm sure it'll be fine. He chuckles the most famous last words to ever be uttered. It's never fine. Yeah, sure dude. You tell yourself that she was just in full-on panic cause we opened the door. Shoji chuckles. Ijiru brushed Shoji off it was expected because whether you knew it or not, you cared about them. And you had just found out that Katz was injured let's not worry about my Omega right now we have other stuff to deal with before the others get home all three men agreed and turned their focus to the blueprints on the counter. Taking apart your nest should not have been as emotional as it was but it was your first real nest. And the boys loved it, so it was not something done lightly you almost couldn't bring yourself to do it. But when you thought about your injured alpha, the decision was easier you carefully grabbed everything you needed from your room, pillows, blankets, clothes, and stuffed animals and carefully carried them into their den. 
You looked at their bed with glee you knew that it was the perfect place to put it clearing out the sheets and blankets. You smiled at the blank canvas soon after pacing around to get a scope of the side. You began your work carefully weaving blankets and clothes together you even pulled things from their dirty hamper to make sure it had the perfect amount of each of their scents you even ran back to your hamper for a few things. After about 30 minutes, you took a step back to look it over, whining because something still wasn't feeling just right so you went back and started moving a few things around, swapping out more of the older items for newer ones you had hoped that would be what fixed the problem. But you weren't that lucky it still didn't feel right as there was a nagging feeling at the back of your head maybe it was missing that you quickly exited the room and went back to yours to grab the things Denki and Mina had left for you once you got back. You quickly weaved in what they had given you once those were in their proper places. That nagging feeling was all but gone you were proud of what you had been able to accomplish and it's been over an hour. You exclaimed as you looked at your phone why was he not home yet. Looking between your new nest and the door, you contemplated asking Ijiru if Katsuki was okay it made your Omega whine at the fact that he was so far away no you couldn't worry about that right now if you kept worrying about that right now. You would just spiral further. And that wasn't what Katsuki needed he needed his Omega to be strong. You needed to show both alphas how good of an Omega you could actually be so you decided not to bother Ijiru you would crawl into your newly formed nest and make sure to send the whole thing so that when Katsuki finally made it home and he and Ijiru lay in bed, the only thing both alphas would be able to focus on was each other and maybe you. You crawled into your nest and buried yourself in the blankets piled at the center you released as many calming pheromones as you could you had to set the stage for them per se you knew Ijiru was going to be under a lot of stress dealing with things while Katsuki took his time to heal and you wanted nothing more than to take all his pain away if you were being honest with yourself. You would have rather been shot than him you've been through worse anyway, so it would have just been one more thing to add to the list. As you laid there, you could feel your eyes getting heavy making nests was serious business, so you weren't surprised that you wanted to sleep you wrapped your arms around what you knew was Katsuki's pillow and buried your face in it you couldn't help but inhale the scent that was so uniquely him cinnamon and sugar. You didn't even like sweets but this scent was something you didn't think you could live without just as you were about to drift off. You heard a commotion coming from outside the doors. God fucking damn it, put me down. You fucking morons acting like I can't fucking walk I can walk just fine all of you are blowing this way out of proportion it was two lousy bullet wounds and they didn't even hit anything serious. That was Katsuki. He was finally home. He was okay. Well as okay as someone can be while yelling like that you couldn't help but laugh as you listened to him berate his friends it was the strangest friendship you had ever seen. Where's my damn Omega? They should be here right now did you lose them, shitty hair? You had one damn job and that was to keep an eye on them. You couldn't help but giggle at the grumpiness of your alpha you really considered going out to save the boys from his wrath but it was just cute even after getting shot. He had the energy to bark orders and yell at everyone you could hear Ijiru trying to calm him and you could smell the pheromones that flooded the apartment you finally decided to take pity on the other alphas out there and take Katsuki off their hands. You walked out of their den and released your own sweet pheromones in an attempt to draw Katsuki's attention Katsuki almost got whiplash from how fast he turned his head he let out a breathy whine and smiled. Mega. Your cheeks burned at the new nickname, before he could rush over to you. You walked over and gently wrapped an arm around his middle and motioned for him to drape his arm over your shoulders you must be in pain why don't we go lay down for a little bit. I missed you today. Katsuki was all too happy to follow your lead. The closer you got to their den, the more nervous you got you didn't want him to get upset, thinking you had invaded his space but you had to stay strong since you made it for them. You couldn't help the anxiety that soured your scent Katsuki was either too nice to say anything or in too much pain to notice you took a few deep breaths as you got to his door and opened it slowly I made it for you so you could relax while you were injured, do you like it? As Katsuki took in the sight in front of him he was for the first time in his life at a loss for words never in his life did he think such a beautiful omega would make the most comfortable looking nest. Was it just for him, just so that he would be able to heal peacefully? It caused his alpha to stir. Wanting to claim you as his own he could feel the ache in his canines it's perfect mega absolutely perfect you're getting amazing at making nests. Your omega keened at the praise instantly wanting to bear its neck to this alpha you had to watch yourself the motion almost felt too natural like this was meant to be but you knew better than that you made your way into the center of the nest. Made yourself comfortable only thing you needed to do was invite him and would you lay with me. I think it will help. Katsuki smiled and wasted no time as he laid down on your right side there was no place he would rather be than at your side I was really worried about you you really don't have to do all this for me I don't want MPPH. Katsuki hushed you with a gentle finger to your lips and it took all your willpower not to wrap your lips around it where did that thought come from? What were these alphas doing to you? No, you'll stop that now I don't do anything. I don't wanna do I won't hear you saying how you're not worth it or how it's too much trouble the LOV or small fry compared to us that no good brat just caught me off guard I should've killed him when I had the chance I was too soft. Katsuki you attempted to protest but were met with his hand completely covering your mouth. 
SHH. Let's just rest I've got two comfy pillows and my sweet Omega between them. You blushed. What did he call you? His Omega. You licked the palm of his hand so you could speak freely Ah, You, what the fuck? Are you five? He groaned, no real malice in his voice. You're Omega. When did that happen? You smiled in a failed attempt at teasing the heat that reached your ears completely betrayed you. Katsuki smirked he found you absolutely adorable. You were completely unable to hide your emotions everything you were feeling was always written so plainly on your face let me make this clear princess I want you to listen carefully. You are ours now there is no changing that no other man or woman will be able to harm you and if they try. You don't want to know what me and IG are capable of doing I know over 86 different ways to kill someone without getting caught and that's without using my quirk. Your eyes widened as your cheeks burned hotter oh. I'm soft claiming you and so is IG are you okay with that? Your voice left you you were so flustered all you could manage was a little nod you couldn't even muster up the courage to ask him exactly what he meant by that but your heart and Omega wanted everything that he was offering and so much more. Good girl now go to sleep Katsuki wrapped his uninjured arm over your waist and buried his face in your neck, sighing as your scent filled his nose. Not long after the two of you fall asleep, Ijiru comes to bed. Tired from taking over Katsuki's responsibilities he smiles to himself seeing the large nest you built she took apart her nest for us. They look so cute like this he thought as he gently climbed into bed, his large arm wrapping over the two. You've always had trouble sleeping. Ever since you were a pup nightmares were also something fairly common. You had one every few days you hadn't had any recently, which you had been extremely grateful for but it seemed your luck was running out it started with the door being slammed open as you, Katsuki and Ijiru were cuddling by the fire. You were running through the woods in the backyard the only thing running through your mind was the last thing you heard Ijiru shout to you run why, and, and don't look back we will be fine, I promise. That was followed by five gunshots all in quick succession you had no idea if those came from Shindo's gun or Ijiru's all you know is that you saw Denki and Hitoshi on the ground as you ran out through the back door you hoped they were still alive. They had to be you were running as fast as you could over branches, leaves, rocks and down trees you couldn't believe that he found you just as you thought you were in the clear you heard two bullets fly past your head FRK. It was Shindo and he was hot on your trail. If he was on you then what happened to Ijiru you knew Katsuki had been injured but Ijiru was still fine were the shots you heard kill him. It had to be. There was no other reason that Shindo would have gotten this close to you if they were still alive tears were falling down your face it was all your fault you killed them if you had never come into their lives they would still be alive. The more you cried, the slower you ran, and the slower you got. The closer Shindo got to his prize you looked back to see how far away he was and in an instant you felt chains wrapping around you as if from nowhere at all you struggled against them as they dragged you back the way you came. You screamed and kicked in the tree line you saw corpses it was your friends every single one of them all of them had been shot and strung up as if they were part of a display at a museum you felt a quick tug on the chain and you were back at his feet, cowering in fear a sight that was all too familiar to you you fucking beach. Did you think you could hide from me forever you are mine to do with as I please mine to use abuse and whore out to whomever comes calling I hope this display I have provided is enough to remind you exactly who you are dealing with. Next thing you know, he is dragging you out of the forest. Not a care in the world for how your body got caught against the underbrush cuts quickly formed on your arms and legs, only to be made worse as dirt stuck to the BLD oozing from them now. Please stop, let me go. You pleaded you knew it wouldn't do any good but you couldn't stop yourself from trying. Shindo turned around and spit right in your face you are in no position to make requests. Slut this never would have happened if you had just come home that day instead of running off with those two losers some alphas they were. They barely even put up a fight put them both down like the mutts they were. You wanted to respond. You wanted to defend them but before you could think of the right words a familiar gag was placed over your mouth only to quickly be followed by a blindfold he had you. Shindo quickly picked you up from the ground and tossed you over his shoulder time to go home you have a lot of catching up to do. Katsuki's brow furrowed when your sweet calm scent changed slowly but drastically it had almost become rancid he had never smelled you this distressed before his eyes opened and he saw you were crying in your sleep. Your pulse was racing beneath his cheek he tried to soothe you by letting out calming pheromones but you were too deep asleep to even realize what he was doing princess. Princess, wake up, he whispers, gently trying to shake you awake you're safe, baby please wake up. Ijiru was stirred by his mate's voice was it too early? Or maybe it was too late for either to be awake either way they should be asleep. As he began to wake he smelled a very burnt sugar and very dead flowers at the realization his eyes shot open. Not sure what to make of the scene in front of him why were you crying? You could hear both Katsuki and Ijiru calling you were they still alive? Was this a dream? It was a nightmare it had to be there was no way Shindo could actually kill them, right? It took every ounce of willpower you had but you forced your eyes open you were rewarded by the sight of two pairs of bright red eyes looking down at you completely full of life. Nothing like the empty ones from your dream you're alive. 
You were overjoyed and abruptly threw your arms around both of their necks as you broke down into complete hysterics. If both alphas weren't so concerned they would have laughed at your words. Of course they were alive it would take more than a few bullets for them to die Pebble, did you have a nightmare? Does this happen often? You nodded. Not trusting your own voice if you spoke now, you might be convinced to tell them about your dream. And that was the last thing you wanted to do all you wanted to do was be in their arms. Okay. Okay just relax whatever happened was just a dream nothing is going to harm you. Not while we have anything to say about it. Katsuki Huff's Ijiru shot him a glare now was not the time for him to be short with you he didn't care if he had meant it or not. You trusted them. There was no doubt that they meant what they said but you could not get the images of all your friends dead bodies out of your head while you knew them. You also knew Shinda, who had your dad in his corner as amazing as Katsuki and Ijiru were. If your dad got involved there was nothing they could do nobody ever escapes from his grasp you had learned that the hard way. You adjusted yourself so you could properly sit in Ijiru's lap you wanted nothing more than the safety his arms provided I was so scared you felt his hands move towards your lower back to rub small circles into the skin there. You've nothing to be scared of Pebble we will always be here when you need us the most Ijiru kissed the crown of your hair gently and released more pheromones to try to lull you back to sleep Katsuki followed his lead and did the same. They didn't want you to get overwhelmed by them but they did want you to relax it was clear no amount of words were going to provide you that. Katsuki cleared his throat and gripped your chin gently forcing you to look at him your glassy. See eyes met his vermilion ones and you wanted to start crying all over again but he shushed you. Gently stroking your cheek you need to go back to sleep we will watch over you. We promise. You nodded and buried your face against Idris scent gland. You wanted to take in as much of the woodsy earth scent as you could the more you breathed and the faster sleep seemed to come back to you before you knew it your eyelids started to get heavy. You heard a muffled conversation starting between your alphas but before you could attempt to decipher what they were saying sleep overtook you once again. Ijiru looked at Katsuki as he cradled you in his arms you have any idea what that was about. Katsuki just shook his head we can have Hitoshi talk to her and find out I know it's not ideal but you know she won't tell us any other way. Good idea. It's not like she would even know if he used his quirk we should do something for her though she worked hard on this nest maybe breakfast in bed. You can barely make instant ramen and I'm out of commission until my fucking shoulder heals though it does feel a little better being in here. Ijiru huffed in annoyance not manly dude I could so make something that wasn't cup noodles. Name one thing and eggs don't count because you'd be an actual dumbass if you can't cook an egg. I'm going to fight you when you're healed I can make pancakes it's not rocket science to mix flour, sugar and water then maybe cut up some fruit you act like I'm an actual child the pout on his face only further proves Katsuki's original point. It's not just flour, sugar, and water rocks for brains you need salt, vanilla baking powder and eggs for god's sake Ijiru you'll burn down my whole kitchen. And if you disorganize my shelves, so help me god, Hiroshima Ijiru. I will explode you into next week Katsuki wanted to sit up and strangle his mate but between you and his injuries he was at an impasse. Kirishima glared at Katsuki across the bed how he had fallen in love with this overzealous angry Pomeranian. He had no idea you were the most dramatic man I have ever met in my life what about French toast? I'm sure I could manage that without you crawling up my ass. Katsuki pondered over that for a minute French toast was not overly complex and he could supervise that didn't require too much use of his arm I guess and we can top it with fresh fruit I think we have strawberries in the fridge plus we need to make some for Pikachu and eye bags are they by the way. Exhausted. I'll talk to them tomorrow. You nestled deeper into Ijiru's chest and sigh softly Alpha Ijiru could feel his face heating up. He hadn't expected to hear that from you so soon. I soft claimed her for the both of us you're welcome. Katsuki lets out. Excuse you. You did what? Were you going to tell me first? What if she wasn't ready to hear that? We all but kidnapped her from her life, with good reason of course, but that's so not the point we don't even have a collar for her to wear or a courting gift for that matter. He was trying to hide his excitement under a mess of insecurities Ijiru could not handle you rejecting them he had never wanted an Omega so much before you, he thought Katsuki was it for him. Katsuki rolled his eyes Ijiru was too hot to be this insecure your dumbass rambling is going to wake them up they said yes so we can figure everything else out tomorrow what matters now is they are ours and most importantly we can file the intent paperwork. Ijiru's eyes widen. That's where Katsuki was going with this if they filed the legal documents to start an official claim since Shindo never did. There would be no way he could try to take you back legally. You would be theirs. Whether they liked the laws or not this time it worked in their favor you're a genius. He smacked him in the arm shut the fuck up, hair for brains, you'll wake them up. Ijiru looked down at your sleeping form and smiled. You were knocked out completely drunk on their pheromones he watched as Katsuki wrapped his arm around you and pulled you in as close as possible once it was clear you were both very much asleep he curled himself around your back and laid his arm across both of you having you both in his arms, having you both in this nest. It just felt right he squeezed you just a little tighter they were so close to having you freed from that bastard. They just needed a little more time you just needed to hang on for a little bit longer. You woke up the next morning surrounded by the scents of Ijiru and Katsuki's scents. 
But the bed was cold. Feeling around you noticed that they weren't in the bed where could they have gone. If they left for work they would have woken you and Katsuki was injured so he should be in bed. You got up and looked in the adjacent bathroom but found it empty you were about to go into the main living area when you heard arguing and laughter. What the hell was going on? The batter's too thick, I drew. Also, what bread are you using? Katsuki barks. Ijiru was ready to dump the batter on Katsuki's head the bread that's in the box the bread that we use for everything. Katsuki why are you like this? Denki was ready to fall off his chair if it wasn't for his alpha he would have gotten an explosion to the face by now watching these two try to cook together was the highlight of his life you had better stop. Lightning bug. I can't hold him off forever even if he has a bamar. An elementary school kid could make French toast Ijiru. It shouldn't be this hard. You need to add more milk. That was it that was his last straw he was going to harden his fist and punch him in the face he did not care that he was injured. He did not care that he needed to rest what cared about was his fist colliding with Katsuki's face. You peeked your head around the corner taking in the chaos. You really should intervene Denki looked like he was going to die. Hitoshi looked stressed. Katsuki looked murderous and, surprisingly enough, so did Ijiru. You guys left me this morning you said with a pout as you walked up and wrapped your arms around Katsuki's middle the nest was cold, you whispered against his back. Katsuki's attention was immediately on you we didn't want to this moron wanted to make breakfast he felt a chill throughout his body. Your arms traveled up to his shoulders, your lips moving against his ear. Cats, I swear on everything I love. I will murder you Ijiru turns around putting a slice of brioche into the batter. You smiled and nuzzled into his neck gently releasing your pheromones hoping to de-escalate the situation between them I think you are both doing amazing thank you so much for wanting to feed me. Both alphas fluffed up at your praise of course they could take care of you. What kind of alphas did you think they were? We take care of what belongs to us. Katsuki smirked as he leaned back into you doing his best not to pop a stitch at breakfast. Okay, gross, not at the table Denki whined. Wanting your attention too he was your best friend that had to count for something stupid alpha. You smiled at Denki and leaned over kissing his cheek thank you for bringing him home last night. Denki rewarded you with his signature 1000 watt smile don't sweat it I'll always be there to save his ass when he needs it. You felt Katsuki attempt to lunge at the other blonde and you tighten your grip on him he's a very lucky man to have you. You smile at Hitoshi. Katsuki huffed in your arms you were being ridiculous. Why were you inflating his ego? All that meant was he had to work harder to keep it in check but you hushed him gently and wandered towards Ijiru and did the same thing. Wrapping your arms around his waist though he was a little larger so it was a challenge but you did your best. Thank you for making me breakfast. You mumbled as you placed a gentle kiss on his shoulder blade thick batter or not I think it will be amazing. He looked over his shoulder and flashed you a toothy grin anything for you sweet cheeks I hope you'll like it. You smiled back at him for once completely content you couldn't believe that this was your new life these two amazing alphas wanted to claim you. And after such a short amount of time too I'm sure I will. But happiness was not meant to last forever you knew that all too well. You just wanted to hold on to this a little bit longer before it came crashing down around you you looked around the kitchen and took it all in commuting it to memory so when you eventually lost it, at least you'd have this to hold on to. Your eyes shot open. And you almost sprung out of bed your heart was beating so fast you thought it would burst out of your chest the nightmares were getting worse when they should have gotten better you looked around hoping to see either of your alphas, but they weren't there all you were met with was a cold nest and a faint anxious version of each of their scents you vaguely remember them each kissing your cheek early this morning, whispering that they had a lead on LOV they wanted to look into knowing them, they wouldn't be home till late I wonder who they made babysit me today, you sighed, wishing at least one of them had stayed with you you weren't completely ready to be without one of them just yet Katsuki had been gone for a few days because of his injury, and you got used to having him around your hand ghosted over the dainty necklace they gave you as a courting gift. A white gold chain with a small diamond and crested K and E you finally willed yourself out of bed and swung your feet over the side of the bed so you could slide your feet into your slippers you headed straight into the end suite bathroom you placed your hands on either side of the sink and slowly took a deep breath you are safe here as long as you are here. He can't get you that phase had slowly become a mantra that you said after every nightmare, every panic attack, and every time you had just wanted to give up short of having the boys home, this was the second best way to soothe yourself. You gently splashed cool water on your face to lower your body temperature only after you had calmed slightly. You took one of the small green pills Ida had prescribed for your anxiety they tended to make you a bit drowsy, but they all but erased all traces of your anxiety. And that's what you need right now, you have no idea when someone will get here so you needed to get through your day. You looked back into the room as you heard your phone ring, making you smile maybe it was one of the boys thinking you were up you were so excited that you didn't even check the caller ID good morning, you said in a sing-song voice, hoping to hear one of their voices on the other end. Well, 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 my slut sounds happy to hear from me. A gruff, angry voice replied. Your breath caught in your throat how had he gotten your number? This can't be happening you ran into the main living area looking around, but found no one did they leave you alone. 
Why was this the one day they hadn't decided to leave you a babysitter? They never did that you wanted to call out for them, but you didn't want to give anything away to Shindo. That's okay you don't have to talk I already know where you are you're with that disgusting alpha couple Bakugo and Kirishima of course. A whore like you would it took every ounce of willpower not to react to his words. If it come home, I won't hurt you too bad plus your heat should be coming up soon right? You need your meds, and I'm the only one who knows what you need I'm the only one who can take care of you once you get like that you bit down on your lower lip hard enough to draw BLD. Oh, pet, I know you're confused. I really do I can sympathize with your situation my puppy was led astray from its master you never would have run away from me if it wasn't for those oversized mutts you are a good girl. And you always do everything I ask so why don't you come home? Or better yet meet me at the restaurant and I'll bring you home I've been worried pet, the name that used to give you butterflies. Now made your skin crawl you were Katsuki's princess you were Ijiru's pebble you were no one's pet not anymore you could not stand to listen to his voice for a second longer you were getting ready to crack. You know, I'm being very patient with you. Or I know where that little compound that they have you in is. Do you want me to have Kirajiri warp us in and kill all your new little friends? Cause that can be arranged you gasped no. You couldn't let that happen your friends. Your alphas. They would all get hurt they wouldn't have a chance if Shindo and the rest of the LOV showed up here you couldn't let that happen. Shindo, you'll never find me again no one ever will that was all you said once you realized what you had to do anything more. And you risked breaking you abruptly hang up the phone, unsure what he was yelling back at you he was pissed. You dropped to the floor and buried your head in your knees how could this happen? No one was safe if he knew where you were you had to leave your Omega felt uneasy with your current train of thought. But you couldn't let anything happen to your pack you had found this one all on your own. And you wouldn't let anything happen to it this was something you could handle this was the only way you could contribute. You would disappear just for now and you'd leave a note so your alphas wouldn't worry this way. They could come to get you when it was safe cause if Shindo had this number, there was no way you could take this phone. You had to stop wasting time you had to get out and get out quickly the more time you wasted. The higher the chance that Shindo would just show up you went into their closet to find a small duffel bag to fill it with everything you would need clothes, shoes, and a hoodie from each alpha that took some time you had to make sure that it was absolutely covered in their scents lastly. You grabbed some basic soaps and hair care supplies from the bathroom. Once finished, you looked back at the nest you had made, and it was a wreck destroyed from night after night of cuddling close together you willed yourself not to cry this was only temporary. Just to keep them safe you will be back soon you could never leave your alphas. Even if they aren't yours yet at least you had hoped it wouldn't come to you disappearing but you needed to fix it for them once you were gone. They wouldn't have anything the least you could do before you destroyed them was give them a safe place you knew this wouldn't be any easier for them than for you you quickly walked back over and changed out some of the clothing items for newer ones, making sure that everything was perfect before quickly resenting the whole thing the only things that hadn't made their way back were the sweater from Denki and Mina's scarf you would need to make a new nest wherever you went. Now, all that was left was to leave them a note you threw your bag over your shoulder and went to the kitchen you pulled out a small notepad that Katsuki kept to jot down his weird grocery lists you took a deep breath and put pen to paper. To Katz and Iji, I'm sorry I must do this, but I have no choice Shindo called, and he knows where I am I have to go I won't continue to endanger the two people I care about most neither of you genuinely understands what he is willing to do to get me back I'm not leaving cause I don't trust you I'm not leaving cause I don't think you wouldn't do everything to protect me I'm leaving cause I want to protect you. This is the only way I know how once this is all over, I promise to come back, and hopefully, you'll let us pick this up right where we left off if not. I understand I can't make you both wait around for me after all. The only thing I did was cause you trouble. Staying here in this house with both of you was a dream come true. It was everything I never dared dream of. I never thought I could be this happy but you both showed me how life should be. And I will forever be grateful I guess what I'm trying to say is that somewhere over the last few weeks, I fell in love with you. You both are doing everything you can to keep me safe. This is my way of doing the same thing. Please don't come look for me this is the best thing for everyone it's bad enough that I see you all die in my dreams I don't think I could handle it in real life please take care of this for me. If and when I come back, I'm going to want it. All my love, your princess and his pebble kiss mark. You gently wiped away the tears that hadn't stained your note you reached up behind your neck and unclasped your necklace you wanted it to be safe more than you wanted to take it with you if something were to happen to it. Your heart wouldn't be able to handle it you gently laid it on top of the note along with your cell phone. You grabbed your bag and took one last look at everything around you if you could just bottle up the smell here, you would. But you would be back soon you had no doubt. Plus you were keeping them safe with one final glance, you quickly exited the door. Back Hugo's heart started pounding in his chest. And his alpha was calling for something he had no idea about from the look on Ijiru's face. He must be experiencing the same thing he hoped you were okay maybe he would send you a quick text to check on you who did he leave with you today. Wasn't it Pikachu's turn to babysit? Maybe he would text him, too. Princess, are you okay? I haven't heard. From you yet it's getting pretty late. Cats. Oi. Palachu. Is why and okay? I haven't heard. 
from them yet give me an update cats. He put his phone back on the desk, and he would give you both an hour to respond then and only then would he panic. You pulled your hood over your head and adjusted the mask to cover the entire lower half of your face you found refuge in a familiar vacant building. Finding a partially furnished room to use as your hiding spot you hated this part of town. But you knew this would be the last place they would look for you everyone would be safe if you stayed here and kept your nose down you took a deep breath this was definitely a step down from where you were before. But you had endured so much worse a rundown room in an abandoned building was nothing. You took in your surroundings as you decided on a place for a nest part of you hated that you had become so reliant on them. But you needed some semblance of safety, and that was the only thing you could think of that would provide that you settled on the corner farthest from the door and haphazardly threw together a small nest it wasn't much bigger than the ones you used to make in your closet. But it would do. You wrapped yourself in the scented items you had brought from home and started to relax a small nap wouldn't hurt you were moderately safe here you had a long morning and deserved a nap you only hoped the nightmares stayed away because now you had no protection from them. The fuck you mean Denki isn't around? Where the fuck is he? He was supposed to be watching them this morning. Katsuki growled as he and Ijiru drove home Why do you mean you can't find him? Have you called Mina and checked with her? What about Hitoshi? Find them. Katsuki was doing his best to stave off his alpha, but he was one inconvenience away from being feral he knew he shouldn't have left this morning. But this was the most promising lead they had gotten it was the location of their HQ where your dad spent most of his time they were planning to raid it. But he couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong terribly wrong. He could tell Ijiru was trying to calm him down. But his own distress scent was betraying him he gently placed his hand on his mate's thigh and squeezed as if to say it'd be okay Ijiru could only offer him a sad smile his alpha was crying out for you. They got home quicker than normal. Thanks to Katsuki's a plus driving skills it had nothing to do with him ignoring every speed limit from Shibuya to Musutafu they could smell the slightest tinge of distress when they entered the main house. But it was clear you weren't there the bright, cheerful air you brought about the house was gone. He looked around the room. Eyes catching on a small glittering object on the counter they both made their way over, only to have their hearts shattered as they saw your phone and necklace neither Alpha had the strength to pick that letter up it was clear what you wanted you were leaving them, but why? What had they done? After they allow themselves to spiral, Ijiru is the one who picks it up first he quickly skimmed the heartfelt letter he quickly went from sad to enraged he picked up your phone, smiling, noticing you had disabled the lock good girl. He looked through your call history and found the number easily after jotting it down, he looked a bit more, seeing you had the sense to record the conversation that's my girl we got him Ijiru handed everything over to Katz and smiled we will use it as a last resort but first, we need to find them. You were awoken from your nap by your burner phone who was calling you. You had no time or desire to give anyone this number. It was strictly for emergencies you looked at the unknown number hesitantly maybe the boys had figured it out. H hello. Laughter. How had he caught on so quickly? You really think running is your best option right now pet? Shindo snarled into the phone. I'm not yours anymore. I have alphas who actually care about me I don't need you anymore. You shouted with as much conviction as you could muster up but all you heard was someone scream. Ugh. FRK. Bring it on losers. Blasty's punches hurt way worse than that. You gasped as you heard that familiar voice. There was no way it couldn't be you left they were supposed to be safe this had to be some sick trick. Why, and, I'm, he starts before groaning I'm fine. This is nothing Katz has been exploding my face for years now. Stay where you are. Denki groaned as he spits up into his captor's face only to be met with another punch straight to his gut. Your heart was beating out of control how had they gotten Denki? You just saw him yesterday. He's a beautiful Omega. Why? And I'm sure Shiggy would make a fortune selling tickets for him plus it smells like his heat is coming. Your grip tightened on your phone you couldn't let Denki go through what you did he was so good he was probably your best friend right now he had an alpha and a life you refused to allow him to be broken how could he ask you to just stand by and let that happen? What are you offering? You could hear Denki start to protest. But anything he was about to say was cut short now, all you were able to hear was mumbling that's a good girl I want to propose a trade you come back without kicking or screaming. Just walk in through the front door and take his place it will go back to business as usual then and only then will I let this little freak go no strings attached. How can I trust you? What if you are lying to me? That laugh again. You hated it you knew he had the upper hand, but you could do nothing I've never lied to you. Pet you're the one who left me after you had promised to stay you had promised you'd be good if I let you get that job clearly a mistake that I won't be making again. When and where? You could hear Denki screaming louder, but those were quickly silenced how? He didn't even want to think about it. Our warehouse. The one down by the port in Fukuoka it's number 23 I've brought you here before I'm sure you remember those nights, right? Omega. Chills ran down your spine. Only two people could call you that, and he was not one of them but since that's where they had taken Denki, you knew their intentions with him he would take your place, and hell would freeze over before you would subject someone to your fate. Fine, I'll be there in a few hours I'm not near Fukuoka right now. 
I will send someone to collect you. We have this new recruit with a bird quirk. Hawks is his name. He can come get you. I don't know if I trust you to come on your own. You grimace. He talked about you like you were some missing part of his collection. You had no regrets. Denki would be safe. Hawks, why did that sound familiar? You could have sworn you heard that somewhere he can meet me at Mustafu Central Park in an hour. That will do. I'll see you soon. Pet, make sure you're ready for me. Yes, sir, I will see you soon, you mumbled, quickly falling back into the role you were so familiar with it was easy enough this had been your life from the time you were 18 it wasn't any different now than it was before only that was the biggest lie you told yourself today this time. When you went back, you knew what you were missing out on you knew how good life could be. You hang up the phone and place it on the floor. You will not cry anymore you couldn't give Shindo the satisfaction of breaking you you needed to be strong you were doing this to save your friends you were all too aware of how cruel Shindo could be when he wanted to you grab the black and orange hoodie and put it on it was the only thing you would take you would leave everything else you knew if both men tried hard enough. They would find it and when they did. Your stuff would be there you quickly jotted down an address and tucked it into your nest they would know where to find you if they weren't furious with you. You took a few more minutes to steady your breath and headed over to the park you took your time and relished your freedom you had no idea the next time you would feel the calm wind against your face, the sun's warmth on your cheeks, or even the annoying babble of people passing by these were all such small things that you took advantage of you avoided every shortcut and made sure to run into every roadblock imaginable. 45 minutes later, you arrived at the park you found a small bench in the middle, watching kids playing people walking their dogs, people clearly on dates, and even a few people on a mid-afternoon run you only had a few precious minutes left, and you would do everything to remember how it felt to make your own choices. Listen, I cats I'm picking up why, and, but I, have to bring her to Shindo theirs. Nothing I can do they have Denki Hawks. No, you don't. You bring them too. Me right now, Kago. Blasty, I'll give you the address, but please, be smart there's only so much I'll be able to do I'll do my best too. Keep them safe Hawks. She thinks she trading herself for Denki's Freedom Hawks. Why would she do that? IG. This doesn't make sense IG. How did they get Denki? I just don't. Understand IG. I can't explain they are staying. Somewhere about 45 minutes from. The park probably some abandoned. Building Hawks. She doesn't know who I am, so she will. Be scared if we're lucky. Denki will get. To them I don't think they'll cut him. Loose. Hawks. We will start working on it it may. Take a few days, but we will get. They're blasty. I see them now they're holding it. Together pretty well hawks. Insert picture hawks. You overgrown chicken, I will skin you. Alive, so help me God. Blasty. You flinched as you heard someone approaching from behind you you couldn't help as you wrapped your arms protectively around your middle if Shindo had sent them. They weren't someone you wanted to mess with hello there. Chickadee I'm here to escort you back to Fukuoka, hawks announces. You didn't answer him. Nor did you feel he deserved it he knew what would happen to you and still went along with it you merely stood up and faced him you did everything possible to keep your expression neutral you didn't want to give any of them satisfaction of seeing how afraid you were. Strong silent type I can work with that. I just need to put on this quirk bracelet and we can be on our way okay. It'll be safer for me and you he flashes the small silver band in front of your face you handed your wrist over willingly and allowed the small bracket to be locked on. Perfect. He was right you really won't fight back you must really care about that stupid blonde kid Hawks wrapped his wing around you and led you out of the park you never really used your biological quirk you hated it never in your life did you want to steal people's quirks you weren't your father luckily. He had given you a regeneration quirk when you were younger because no daughter of mine will go through life without something useful you refused to tell him that you had inherited his the only people that knew about that were Shindo and Kenji. That was only because you accidentally stole Kenji's vibration quirk once while in heat. It'll be faster if we just fly you mumbled, still refusing to meet his gaze. Hawk sighed this wasn't how he had wanted to meet you he had hoped it would have happened at a family dinner a hostage exchange was less than ideal wrap your arms around my neck I see you're very eager to get to your friend. He doesn't need to be involved in this Hawks couldn't help but agree with you no one deserves this, but hopefully, they will devise a plan soon this way. At best, you'd only be with the LOV for a few days as you wrapped your arms around his neck. He lifted you into a bridal style carry. I'll try to take it slow. Okay, chickadee just try not to move around too much, alright. You buried your face in his shoulder he smelled safe it was so confusing you knew he wasn't. But it was almost a nostalgic smell one you had long yearned for thank you. You mumbled if he didn't have heightened senses. He wouldn't have heard it he wanted nothing more than to fly you straight to Blasty. But all in good time when the time comes. He would make sure to hand you over to both alphas safe and sound. The flight over was surprisingly smooth the second you landed on the roof. You wished you were elsewhere Hawks gently placed you down you shouldn't go in there with that on I'll take it. He said, motioning to your hoodie it'll just make things harder than they have to be. 
You sighed you couldn't help but agree you just couldn't bear to part with it it was all you had left of Ijiru and Katsuki Katsuki had told you he'd had this particular hoodie since high school so. Both Alpha's scents were permeated into the threads I know. I'll try to get it to you once or twice a day Hawks couldn't bear to see the look on your face. He had never been a very convincing villain. He won't get rid of it, right? You so desperately wanted to believe he was on your side he was gentle, thoughtful, and caring someone like that would never work alongside Shindo. He shook his head and put his hand out. Not wanting to make this more difficult I promise, chickadee I'll keep it safe for you long shot or not, you decided to trust him and handed over the faded fabric as you felt it slip from your hand. The tears you had been fighting off started to trail down your cheeks it was real this was all over before you could get lost in your despair. You felt the faintest calming pheromones and a gentle hand on your cheek don't let them win never let them see you cry. Huh? You heard me, chickadee. He smiled as he very carefully folded the faded UA high school hoodie into his bag. Never let them see you cry. You've got more power here than you think. Okay. You found the older man's words comforting because he was right. You couldn't control many things. But you could control your reaction. And you would never let them see you cry again. You were not the same person that left a month ago. You were stronger. Maybe not physically but mentally you knew your worth. You felt the warmth radiating off him in waves as he led you inside it did wonders for your nerves and gave you the confidence to walk in you were doing great until you smelled Denki it was so rancid you couldn't even imagine what they were doing to him when Hawks opened the door. The air left your lungs the sight you were met with was that of your worst nightmares. Denki sat there, nose bldy and a reddish purple bruise around his eye, hands, and feet tied to the cheap metal chair his head hung over his body as he drifted in and out of consciousness. It took everything in you to not run over and try to help oh my god, Denki. You gasp as you almost step forward. Only stopped by the tugging of your collar you felt around the back of your neck and saw a red feather holding you back. Kago shook his head when you looked at him can't let you do that, chickadee. Let go of me. You struggle as the feather holds you back. Now where's the fun in that? Shindo's voice echoes as he walks into the room I thought we had a deal. Pet a backstabbing whore for a slut he grins wickedly, uncaring of Denki's. You glared at your ex-boyfriend let him go you looked him in the eye for the first time in a long time. Shindo rolled his eyes what's this? Did my pet finally learn how to use its teeth? Don't worry we have ways of dealing with disobedient whores just look at him Shindo laughed as he dug his gloved finger into one of Denki's open wounds hawks. Bring them here now. Denki cried out behind the gag in his mouth his whole body felt like it was vibrating it was almost like an earthquake was happening inside of him. He watched in horror you knew all too well the pain he was in the only difference here was Denki couldn't heal the way you could if you didn't have this damn bracelet on. Hawks almost couldn't handle the scene before him, but years of training kept any signs off his face he pushed you forward so you were kneeling at his feet he moves to leave, but Shindo stops him no, stay don't you want to turn with them. Hawks shrugs nah, not my type, but thanks, though maybe next time gotta get this kid out of here. Shindo grabbed Hawks wrist, stopping him why would you do that? That was the deal, was it not? Shindo laughed yes, yes, that was the deal but I never specified when and how I would let him leave, now did I. You, my pet he gripped your chin, forcing you to look up at him you should have been more specific about what you wanted. Hawks wished he could say he was surprised, but he expected this after everything that had happened. You were still too trusting the look of absolute devastation on your face was enough to prove that. No, you promised. Shindo slapped you across the face. And for the first time since you had been down there, Denki moved to break his restraints only to be stilled by a small feather I said I would you never told me how or when to do so all I promised was that I would and if that's after I sell him off to some alpha, then so be it. You willed Denki to stop moving you were okay since this was nothing you were not worth him getting hurt over you steeled your face and looked back at him you're a piece of shit you knew what the deal was I came back willingly and without a fight, so you have to let him go. Shindo kicked you in the ribs hard enough that you knew some cracked I will let him go once some alpha buys him then and only then he'll be their problem the big show will be Friday night I hope you're excited cause you'll be the entertainment. Denki continued pulling at his arms you could see the BLD dripping into the floor he was going to break his wrist at this rate you flooded the room with pheromones. Hoping to soothe him if you both had any chance of escape, he needed to stop. TCHH, this slut doesn't know how to shut up. Shindo growled and yanked his head back by his hair once he was hovering above him. He spit in his face he then quickly placed a piece of fabric around Denki's eyes now Denki was starting to panic he couldn't move. See or talk he could safely cross sensory deprivation off of his kink list hawks. Go set them up in one of the cells for tonight maybe a night locked away will teach them some manners keep them both gagged, two can't of them plotting, can we? Hawks acknowledged him with a nod as he walked out of the room he sent out several feathers to get you both situated and standing. All right. Come on please don't make this harder than it has to be you didn't understand why Denki wasn't fighting now. Before, he would have done anything to get to you. But now he was obediently walking at Hawks's side if you saw it correctly, was Denki leaning against the Alpha for comfort. Let's go. You were immediately silenced by Hawks placing his hand over your mouth. 
Chickity, don't ask questions when you're not ready for the answers. You abruptly shut your mouth as you approached a small door that, when opened, revealed a cold and disgusting cell. P. There were chains connected to the wall on either side of the cell. The only thing that resembled a bed that you could see were a couple of ratty BLD stained blankets not nearly enough to be any source of comfort. Hawks gently helped Denki to the ground and loosely connected him to the chains. You noticed him whisper something to the blonde but couldn't hear what it was. Leave him alone. Hawks looked at you with a bemused expression. I'm not your enemy here, kid. He watched him pull out a purple shirt and put it up to Denki's face. Hadn't Hitoshi been wearing that last night? Denki visibly relaxed almost falling, only to be caught by a few rogue feathers. What did you do to him? The same thing I'm about to do to you, Hawk sighed and pulled out the familiar fabric he allowed you to take it from him once in your hands. You took a deep breath and allowed your alpha scent to take over. It was over too soon when he took it back and neatly folded it into his side pouch. I can't get caught with these. Okay. You nodded and allowed him to hook you into the oddly loose restraints once he pulled out a gag. You wanted to cry couldn't you at least talk to Denki? It would be torture just to have to stare at him you'd never be able to say sorry shshshh remember what I said the chains are loose enough that you'll be able to get it off just put them back on if someone comes by. You nodded and allowed him to finish his job the last thing he did was take the quirk bracelet you looked up at him. Confusion evident on your face he pulled out an identical one and smiled this one's fake you'll be able to use your quirk. Why was he being so nice to you and Denki? Shindo's men are never like this they just take and take. Never caring who they heard it was weird you looked up at him, confused who told you about my quirk. You mumble. Don't worry about that. He dismisses worry about him they beat him up a lot. He left without another word you tested the restraints, which were loose enough for you to escape you quickly threw it all aside and scrambled over to Denki you wrapped your arms around him and sobbed into his shoulder I'm so sorry. You sniffle. Denki chuckled and wrapped his arms around you the best he could don't blame yourself I wasn't paying attention on my way back this morning he coughed, doing his best not to show you how much his entire body hurt I was on my run and saw something that caught my eye you know how I get it. You couldn't help but laugh Denki was trying to make you feel better even though he was the one that needed help I never wanted this to happen I left so this wouldn't happen. Denki pulled away from you, completely confused you left. The more he thought about it, the more he understood wait, you left cats and I. Your cheeks burned like a fireplace not permanently. Just till this was over he called me early this morning. He said that he knew where I was I didn't want anyone to get caught in the crossfire I figured if I wasn't there anymore. He had no reason to go after them so I left. I was planning on going back and I left a note I mean that has to count. Denki sighed and patted your back as best he could you were far too good for any of them. They'd been doing everything within their power to protect you. Yet you still found ways to put them first. What any of them did to deserve having you in their lives was a mystery. Your leaving would not have stopped anything. You know that, right? Absolutely. None of this is your fault, cats, and I would do anything for you. You have to know that by now they'll find out where we are, and they will come for us. You did. You did know that. And if you were being honest, that's probably the biggest reason you left. You didn't want to be why they had to dirty their hands. This was the only way I could think to help. I'd hope this was enough. But I panicked when I heard he had you. You looked him over and frowned. You could see how badly he was hurt. You wished more than anything you could take it away. You hugged Denki as gently as possible. Your hands growing warm as a soft glow emitted from them. Denki groaned in relief as all of his pain began to subside. Dude, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. It feels amazing. You looked down at your hands, tentatively running them down his arms and holding onto his wrists gently after a few minutes. Denki smiled well, you're more useful than you thought, aren't you? You looked at your hands you'd never been able to do that before your dad had told you it was a self-healing quirk you shouldn't have been able to do that. From what you understood you looked over Denki's face that, up until a few minutes ago, was marred entirely by bruises there wasn't any indication that he'd even been injured you're fine. You're completely fine I don't understand, neither do I. Is that your quirk? You can heal. Why didn't you tell us? You sighed you hated talking about your quirk you technically had too you had inherited your father's quirk. You could take quirks from others at will and he had gifted you a healing quirk. It wasn't supposed to heal others, just yourself you debated how much to tell your friend, but the door swung open before you could say anything shit. What the fuck are you doing? What happened to his face? Shindo screamed he was going to show you mercy by bringing you into his bed you fucking whore. He crossed the cell in three short steps and sent you flying into the opposite wall. Were you hit with a loud thud since when have you been able to do that? You steal that from someone. Your eyes went wide with terror we can talk about this in private, Shindo. He gripped your face and pulled you up, so you were inches from his face why? Don't want your new friends to find out about your quirk. Don't want them to know you can steal their quirks just by touching them. To Denki's credit, he did a great job keeping his face as neutral as possible you clearly didn't want him to find out. You think they'll still want you around knowing what kind of threat you are, huh? He dragged you out the door, slamming the door behind them you could hear Denki calling out to you, but he was quickly muffled by the door. Let go of me. 
You fought as he dragged you down the hallway to another room this one was bigger, and a large glass window allowed you to see inside no, no, please Shindo, I'm begging you I didn't mean to do it honest, I don't know what happened, you're such a shit liar who'd you steal that from, huh, answer me, Shindo spits in your face, even if I did, it wouldn't fucking matter because I wouldn't tell you, Shindo growls at you, his scent souring fine you wanna be bratty, I'll teach you what I do to brats like you.